It's great to have you with us. This week, the Florida Gators are once again number one, this time in both major polls. And today, the Gators are looking for their 24th straight win in the SEC. They're 11th in a row against Kentucky. I'm joined by Terry Donahue. Terry, an impressive win last week for Tennessee. We saw a very, over Tennessee, we saw a very balanced Florida attack and on offense, a lot of weapons. Well, Steve Spurrier wants to kill you with the pass and then bury you with his running game. He always has a lot of talented players on offense, but this year, Doug Johnson is quarterback, Fred Taylor is tailback, and Jacquez Green, the all-purpose wide receiver, has really stepped up big each and every week. But it's not the Florida offense that has gotten all the rave reviews this year. It's the Florida defense. They play an attacking style of defense, crowd a lot of players around the line of scrimmage to eliminate the opposition's running game, play some real tight man-to-man -man press type coverage, and there's just no seams to throw the ball into. And as a result, they have been nothing short of phenomenal this year. As we saw last week in the win over Tennessee. Meanwhile at Kentucky, it's hard to imagine a coach anywhere who's more popular than Hal Mummy is after three games. The fans all have their Hal Mummy masks, as you saw a moment ago. They have a street named after the coach here, and they've already written a song about him. He's brought a very exciting offense based on the pass, and the man who runs it for him is Tim Couch. Well, Tim Couch last year was in the wrong offense. He was in an option offense. This year, he's in the wide open style of Hal Mummy's passing game. Couch throws 175 to 180 passes every day in practice. He has thrown 15 touchdowns with just two interceptions. If he can rack up some real impressive numbers this afternoon, he will truly be a Heisman Trophy candidate, and he's only a sophomore. Kentucky won the toss and elected to receive. Tony George ready to run under it for the Gators. Robbie Stevenson will kick off. We get this meeting between Florida and Kentucky underway. Florida leads the series. They've won the last 10 and 16 of the last 17. Last year was 65 to nothing at the Swamp in the first career start for Tim Couch. But this is a much different Kentucky team. Very deep kickoff. It sent Theo Sanford to the back of the end zone. And the Wildcats will begin at the 20-yard line. Led by Tim Couch, the sophomore from Hyden, Kentucky. 15 touchdown passes, only two interceptions in the first three games of the season. He is the leading passer in the Southeastern Conference. Very little breeze as the ball game begins. The Wildcats working into the breeze, and the first pass was batted down, or was it intercepted? The Gators say yes. No indication yet from the officials. It is picked off. It was batted down by Ed Chester. And intercepted by Willie Rogers. Ed Chester is the player who dominated the game uh, last week against the University of Tennessee. Here he gets on the pass rush, gets his hands up. The ball really hits him right in the chest. And Willie Rogers, 54, comes up, but it was ruled not... It was not a, a, a catch by Willie Rogers. It should not have been a catch. It appears from every play. Fred Taylor on the first carry for Florida. Trying to turn the corner. Touchdown, Gators. Officially a 16-yard run for Taylor. And what a deflating start for the Kentucky Wildcats in front of this raucous crowd. They were a very confident bunch when we spoke with them yesterday, but that confidence will be tested with the way this game has begun. What are the things you want to do? You want to get the ball in your best player's hands early in the game. Fred Taylor just makes this run on his own. He starts off right tackle. It gets clogged up, and then what good backs do, they see daylight. He All of a sudden, he sees daylight and takes it with his 225 pounds and puts the Gators on the board. 22 seconds into the game. Collins Cooper adds the extra point. First rushing touchdown of the season for Taylor, and the Gators are out quickly. Robbie Stevenson ready to kick off for Florida. 
They needed only one play after the interception by Rogers. And Craig Yeast in the middle of the three men back deep. Another booming kickoff by Stevenson with the breeze through the back of the end zone. And once again, Kentucky will start at the 20, hoping for a better start than what they experienced a moment ago. Controversial play on the first play from scrimmage of this game. It certainly appears that this ball hit the ground before Rodgers picked it up after the deflection by Chester. Well, Sean, unfortunately, neither the umpire nor the side judge had good position, and there's no question on our replay that that's an incomplete pass. There's no doubt about it. But what Kentucky now has to do is simply get that behind them and get on with the game because there's going to be a lot of momentum swings in the game, and you just got to keep playing through them. They go to the ground on first down. Anthony White ahead for one. You see a lot of one-back sets today from Kentucky. White, the main ball carrier, with Jimmy Haley, a pass-receiving tight end. Yeast, Coleman, and Sanford, three wide receivers who start the game. Up front, a veteran offensive line. All of those gentlemen are starters from a year ago. Flag down as Couch throws it out quickly to Craig Yeast, and he weaves close to a first down. Out near the 30, eight-yard gain. Willie Rogers, the defensive end downfield to make the tackle. There is a flag thrown just as the ball was snapped. Mac Gentry leads this crew of Southeastern Conference officials. And they've already had one major blunder. But you're not likely to see how Mummy get too upset regardless of what happens. We have been uh, most impressed by him. We have substitution in practice on the offense. Substitution in practice on the defense. We'll replay the down. Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator, very upset and hollering at the officials, but Paul what? Mummy's expression almost never changes. No, it doesn't. He's a very cool, calm customer. Florida defense, Tim Bochamp at Chester, Mike Moten, and Willie Rogers. They dominated the Tennessee offensive line last week. Johnny Rutledge, Dwayne Thomas, and Mike Peterson, the linebackers, outstanding, as is the secondary of Williams, George, Brown, and Weary. So it's still second and nine. Offsetting penalties, 7 nothing, Florida. Just more than a minute played on a beautiful day in Lexington. Temperature in the high 70s. That pass caught, first down. Garrett Homer, the true freshman out of the backfield. Up to the 34 for a gain of 13. Fred Weary made the tackle. The impressive thing about that play, the offensive line gave Tim Couch time to work on the right side of the formation. He wanted to go to his right, then all of a sudden, he worked all the way back away from the right side to the left side. That's impressive. Wildcats going without a huddle. Haley, the tight end, went in motion. Couch lost the football. And a scramble for it at the 29-yard line. The umpire indicates that Kentucky got it back. Looked like Haley, the motion man, might have collided with Couch. And that caused the ball to come out. Exactly what happened, Sean. Jimmy Haley, 37, goes in motion. And when he starts to return, the ball is snapped. And he and Couch collide. It's knocked loose. Kentucky dodges a bullet. Very fortunate they got that ball back. It is a loss of five on the play. Second down and 15. Couch works out of the shotgun. Throw it on a blitz. The pass incomplete was deflected in route by Javon Kurtz. And it'll be third down and 15. In last year's game in Gainesville, Kentucky had just 67 yards of offense. That was the lowest ever by a Florida opponent in an SEC game. Again out of the shotgun. Out a lot of time, and it is incomplete. He had Jimmy Haley, the tight end, open. A step behind Tony George, but the pass was just out of his reach. Although Kentucky failed to move the ball, Sean, the encouraging thing for the Wildcat fans is that Tim Couch had time during that series. How Mummy told us yesterday that if our five offensive linemen can block four Florida's four defensive linemen, we can play with them in this game. And that's exactly what happened on that series. Jimmy Carter is the putter. No relation to the former president by the same name, though he is a Georgia native from Dunwoody, Georgia. 
The Wildcats always try to punt the ball out of bounds. And that's not a good punt by Carter. The official along the near sideline still walking out near the 50-yard line. For a violation of the university's student conduct code. Johnson, three-step drop on target to Jacques Green. He breaks the tackle and nearly went all the way down the far sideline. He was tackled by Tremaine Martin, and that saved the touchdown. 24 on the pass to Green. The Kentucky defense, Lamont Smith, Mark Jacobs, Marvin Major, and Anthony Watson up front. Jeff Snedeker, Bob Holmberg, and Lee Wesley, the linebackers. And in the secondary, Tony Woods, Tremaine Martin, Willie Gary, who's a true freshman, and Littleton Ward. Lord has run two plays from scrimmage, a 16-yard run for a touchdown by Taylor, now a 24-yard pass, and they're going even deeper and incomplete. Intended for Jamie Richardson, Tremaine Martin had the coverage. It will be second and 10 at the 25-yard line of UK. Kentucky is putting fresh defensive linemen in immediately in this game. Mike Major, the defensive coordinator, when we visited with him yesterday, he said he's going to play as many as 12, 12 defensive linemen against Florida to try to keep fresh troops rushing the passer and playing hard throughout the entire 60-minute contest. He does not allow his defensive linemen to play more than two snaps in a row. Once they've done that, they come out. Johnson throws incomplete. Looked like Lee Wesley might have gotten a hand on that pass intended for Jacquez Green. Jacquez Green is the go-to guy for the Florida Gators. They want to try to get him the ball as often as they can. One of the things that Kentucky's doing, they're playing a soft, two-deep zone defense, and they're making Doug Johnson make reads. They're going to force Doug Johnson to throw into a lot of zone coverages today and try and take away the big play. They do not want Jacquez Green running wild like he did a week ago against Tennessee. When he had eight catches, a career high for 185 yards. Fans on their feet trying to help the defense. Johnson with all day to throw. It is caught for a first down by Travis McGriff at the 10-yard line. number three, Travis McGriff. The Florida offensive line gave plenty of time to Doug, Doug Johnson to be able to complete this pass. It always starts with protection. Can your quarterback get his feet set? Can he get planted and then rip the ball? Once he throws it, he's got plenty of heat on the ball. McGriff does a nice job of catching the ball in his hands and hanging on to it in traffic. 15-yard gain. First and goal from just inside the 10. Terry Jackson. Tripped up by Tremaine Martin, a gain of five, to just inside the five-yard line for the junior from Gainesville, Florida, out of C.K. Young High School. Florida outstanding in the red zone this season, 15 times inside the 20, 13 touchdowns and one field goal. And the 13 touchdowns, that's the stat that you love. They're not kicking field goals, they're going for touchdowns. And Jacques Green with another touchdown. Littleton Ward had the coverage, but Green got behind Ward. And this big crowd has been silenced quickly as Steve Spurrier's team is off to a 13-0 lead less than five minutes in. Whenever you line up Jacquez Green one-on-one, -on -one, you're you have an advantage. He gives himself plenty of room to fade to the sideline. Steve Spurrier's favorite pass, the fade pass. He loves it. When he gets a chance, he will throw it on you every time, and he always seems to complete it with his quarterbacks. It doesn't matter if it's Danny Werfel, Doug Johnson, they all know how to throw the fade. Colin Cooper with the extra point. Touchdown reception of his career for Jacquez Green, Florida, 14 nothing. We're going with Terry Donahue back here in Lexington, Kentucky. Second Florida scoring drive, just 49 yards after the short punt, and Jacquez Green caught the pass from Doug Johnson. Stevenson already booted two to the back of the end zone. Now he's three for three. Derek Homer 
We'll let it go. Let's check in on the sidelines with Michelle Tafoya. All right, guys. Well, Kentucky defensive coordinator Mike Major has instilled a never-quit attitude in his team. He even printed up these jerseys for their to them to wear under their uniforms. Black flag meaning never surrender. Well, that commitment is being tested early here today, guys. Michelle is right. That commitment's going to be tested by these Gators now. About as bad a start for Kentucky as it could have had. And that pass, is it caught by one of the Florida Gators? No signal yet. Theo Sanford was knocked down by Mike Peterson. There is a flag on the play. Gators are indicating it's their ball, but no confirmation of that from the officials. Encroachment, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, Mike Peterson is one of the best players on the Florida defense. A lot of people think he is the outstanding player in the front. He makes a tremendous play, times it well, and gets there on that short pass attempt by Tim Couch. You can't play it any better than that. Kentucky fans thought there was contact before the ball arrived. The penalty was declined, so it'll be second down and 10. 180 to 14. So they've seen this before. This is not what they thought would happen to them today. Anthony White popped right as he reached the line of scrimmage. He got driven back with his forward progress. Results in no gain. Johnny Rutledge met White right at the junction. We talked at the beginning of the telecast about Florida's defense. They crowd the line of scrimmage with at least eight and sometimes ten people are all up there within a yard, two yards of the line of scrimmage. It's a tough defense to try and attack. Couch going deep, the receiver is stopped. And the nearest man was Fred Weary. The intended target was Craig Yeast, but he has basically put the brakes on around the 50-yard line. And Couch is now one of six for 13 yards with an interception. Jaquez Green back to receive the punt. Last year in the game between these two teams in Gainesville, Green tied an SEC record by returning two punts for touchdowns. This is the first one. It went 66 yards. And the second one even longer. 79 yards. Jimmy Carter angling it to the sideline. Green a fair catch. Well, much Better kick, 46 yards and no return. Hell Mummy has many interesting theories and philosophies. One of those about kicking the punts out of bounds if he can is that generally in this league, the other team has a guy who's going to play in the NFL running the punch back. He feels his punt coverage team, they're all heading for careers as CPAs. So he thinks that's a mismatch, therefore he doesn't want to punt the ball. Well, and the other thing, Sean, is he wants to start with protection first. But I would say that that philosophy, after a 20-yard punt on the opening punt, when you when you give a team a 20-yard punt and you give them that field position, you really put your defense at a bad, bad position on the game. Quick toss to Jacquez Green. He's thrown down right at the line of scrimmage. Good work by the linebacker Lee Wesley and Tremaine Martin. Also in on the play, he's a safety. No gain on the play. What you want to do is you want to have a swarming defense when you're playing the number one team in the country, and that's exactly what Kentucky does on this particular quick screen to Jacquez Green. Florida gets the ball out to him quick, but the pursuit of the Kentucky defense is what took the play away. It's a small Kentucky defense, but they do have speed. Johnson has a battle down and nearly intercepted by Jeff Snedeker. Mike Major calls his defense the leprechaun defense. They're very small, but they can run, and they've made a concerted effort this year to get players with speed on the field at every position. There's Mike Major in the visor. Well, Jeff Snedeker is one of the best players on the Kentucky defense. He is the best linebacker. He has excellent speed. He reaches out and takes that ball away from Terry Jackson. You don't want to give Terry Jackson that ball in the open field. Snedeker, a great play. Kirk Furrier wants to get the ball to the backs in the passing game more often this week. And there is Jackson. First down, tackled by Stettiger from behind in Kentucky territory at the 46-yard line. That's 19 yards on the game for Jackson. Well, I think, that's, I think that's a real interesting call by Steve Spurrier. He was just denied what he wanted 
the previous play. He comes right back. He slips Terry Jackson out of the backfield, and he goes one-on-one -on -one with Snedeker, and Terry Jackson is a better athlete in the open field, in most cases, than Snedeker. Steve told us yesterday he was going to try to isolate the backs more in the game plan against Kentucky. Back to the run with Fred Taylor trying to bounce outside. Looked like the ball came out. The umpire blew it dead. Fred Taylor, number 21, the Florida ball carrier. And he appeared Florida got the ball back anyway, but looked like he was up when that ball came out, but the whistle would stop the play. Snedeker once again involved defensively for Kentucky. The ball definitely was jarred out by the Kentucky defense. There's no question about it. I, did, I didn't see who recovered it, but it came out early, just as you said. Eight of one, second and nine. Eight minutes remaining, first quarter. 14-0 Florida. Short drop, and the pass is low and incomplete. Intended for Jacquez Green. Johnson looks like he's just a little bit off with some of these early throws. Well, remember, he's a young quarterback. You're talking about a sophomore. He, you know, he's played in three games. And, and I know this from dealing with quarterbacks throughout a lot of years. It takes them some time to get into their rhythm. It takes them some time to get comfortable and get some of those butterflies out. The coolest of customers are nervous at the start of games, and they should be. Third down and nine. And many of the fans on their feet. They come on a blitz. And a man is wide open. It's Rod Frazier, a reserve fullback, for the first down for Florida. Down to the 33. 12-yard gain. Littleton Ward made the tackle. Rod Frazier, the younger brother of Tommy Frazier, the great Nebraska quarterback, just slips out of the backfield from the fullback position. He just comes out and he's wide open. Somebody in the Kentucky defense broke the coverage. As you stated, no one is ever supposed to be left uncovered when they come on the blitz like that. It was just a mental bust. Kentucky does not blitz much. Mike Major said yesterday probably wouldn't blitz much in this game. He wants to try to cover these Gators as best he can. Drop play to Taylor, run inside the 30. And down to the 26 and a late flag throw. Littleton Ward made the tackle. It's a gain of eight. I think it's interesting talking to Steve Spurrier yesterday when we said, how are you going to attack Kentucky? He said, we're going to get the ball to Jacquez Green as often as we can and as quick as we can. Against the defense, five-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. And we also want to throw the ball to our backs. We want our backs working into the zones against the Kentucky linebackers. And as a result, he, he comes out and immediately does what he says he's going to do. And a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal about that? But as the game starts to roll on you, sometimes you get away from what you mm -hmm. basically plan to do. Not this guy. He goes right to the jugular immediately. And he has the Kentucky Wildcats on the ropes early. Florida leads 14 to nothing. Just past the midway point of the first quarter. First and 10 from the 21 after the face mask tumbling to the end zone. A little bit too high for Jamie Richardson. Jermaine Martin had the coverage. Johnson pass is headed for number 18, Jamie Richardson. Incomplete. Jermaine Martin's a senior from Apopka, Florida, about an hour and a half from Gainesville, but he told us yesterday he was Second never a Gator fan. <laughs> he said he was a Miami Hurricane fan. That's right. But he said the Gators now, they weren't on the top list. Martin, one of the defensive team captains along with fellow senior defensive back Littleton Ward. Unusual. Two secondary players, captains on a defense. Usually there's a front player, a defensive tackle or linebacker. Johnson again with time. Throw. Almost intercepted. The receiver slipped down and Bob Holmberg got his fingers on it. Rod Frazier was the intended target. And it'll be third down and ten, and the Kentucky defense has had a problem stopping the Gators on third down to this point. Now Doug Johnson has got to avoid the critical mistakes. He's got a good enough team around him to beat Kentucky if he just plays solid. When you throw the ball late out into the flat, you're asking for disaster. He released the ball way too late. He was lucky it wasn't taken back by Holmberg all the way for a touchdown. Third and ten. There's three out of three on third down today. The pass is caught. Richardson has a first down. 
A check that of Travis Taylor. A reserve with his first catch of the year. He's a freshman from Jacksonville. Steve Spurrier going deep down the depth chart here with a catch by Taylor. And Tremaine Martin is the injured player. Well, Steve Spurrier spread the field. He left no backs in the backfield trying to get as many players down into the zones of Kentucky's defense as possible. And Travis Taylor, 19, as you mentioned, his first reception of the year for the Florida Gators this year. And he does a good job of getting the ball up the field and grabbing the yardage for the first down. And we'll get an update on Tremaine Martin in a moment. But first, let's head down to Michelle Tafoya to find out what happened to Terry Jackson. Michelle? Well, Sean, he has sprained his right knee. They're icing it right now. He's limping very badly. He will not play the remainder of this half. They'll assess his condition at halftime and, based on that, determine whether or not he'll play the rest of this game. But they said it's very likely he will not be back today. Sean? Okay, Michelle. Wow, I'll tell you, Sean, now, Terry Jackson, in my humble opinion, he may be the best player in the Florida program. If you talk about a guy that can do everything, he can play offense, defense, cover punts, block punts. This guy is the most versatile player that I've seen this year. His loss would be a serious one for the Gators. And the good news for Kentucky, Martin is running off the field under his own power. Well, as I mentioned last week, Steve Spurrier says Terry Jackson's the best all-around player in college football. He might be. I tell you, I think he's got an argument there. First and goal from the 10. Johnson to the end zone. Green, touchdown. Once again, Green beat Littleton Ward. And the Gators looking very much like the number one team in the country. Have a 20 to nothing lead with 6-16 remaining in the first quarter. You just cannot give Jaquez Green that much room one-on-one -on -one against the defender and expect to hold up unless your defender is one of the best cover guys in the United States. Jaquez Green is quick, explosive, competitive. He's got it all, and he just runs to grass. He doesn't run to space. He just runs to the open grass, and they throw it to him. It's like playing in the sandlot for these guys. Collins Cooper adds the extra point. Two touchdown catches for Green today. He's moved past Ricky Nateel and Aubrey Hill on Florida's all-time touchdown reception list. Back in Lexington, Kentucky, where Jacquez Green has already caught two touchdown passes. Big story to this point, Florida's effectiveness on third down. Four out of four, the third scoring drive of the day for Florida, 11th place, 65 yards. Green, the 10-yard pass. Stevenson, still perfect. Four for four now and booming it into the end zone. And one of the reasons that Florida has been able to convert four for four on third down, Shans, is that there hasn't been a lot of pressure from the front four. Kentucky's defensive line just can't get there. They're not very big. The Florida offensive line is huge and very physical, and they've been giving Doug Johnson the time that he needs to find the open receiver. And as a result, four for four third down conversions. Tim Couch. Well, a lot of work to do today if Kentucky's going to get back into this one. Four-man rush picked up. The pass incomplete. Nearly intercepted off the deflection. Off the hands of Jimmy Haley. Chico Brown was diving for it. Couldn't quite get it. Sean, what happens to a team and a coaching staff is this. Is that when you come out, you're all pumped up for the big game. You're so anxious to play Florida. You believe you can play with the number one team in the country. All of a sudden, they come out and get a 21-0 lead on you. You just keep your composure, you stay with your game plan, you start pecking away at them, and pretty soon you find a way to work yourself back into being competitive. I've seen it time and time again. That's what Kentucky will do. And movement from Chris Comstock, the right tackle. When you don't do it... Ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty. You don't do it with a mistake after mistake. No. Sooner or later, you got to calm down and get going. But remember, when you and I talked to these Kentucky players yesterday and these coaches, they were so excited because they had done so well in the early part of the season, and now they were playing the number one team in the country. Sometimes you can get too hot. Yeah, they're coming off a 49-7 to pounding of Indiana last week in Bloomington. Ouch. 
running for his life, being chased by Javon Kurtz. Kurtz took him down from behind, and Couch also took a shot up high as Mike Peterson joined the collision. Billy Rogers in pursuit of Couch, who needs a little help with his shoulder pad. You've got to give the Florida defense credit. The secondary, this is really a coverage sack. Tony George, number one, the strong safety. He comes on the blitz, but there's nowhere for Couch to unload the ball. That tight, man-to-man -man Florida coverage is what's so hard to defeat. Tennessee couldn't defeat it last week, and Kentucky's struggling this week with it. On third and 11, Couch in the grass through to Haley. And the pass was too hot for Jimmy Haley to handle. Ordinarily, he's an excellent pass receiver, but that one got on him more quickly than he anticipated, and it's another punch up coming from Kentucky. Well, when you're playing the best team in the country, the number one ranked team, and those defensive linemen are coming up field, Couch does a good job stepping up in the pocket, and he just puts a little too much heat on the ball for Jimmy Healy. To, to, for Jimmy Haley to handle. It just was behind him and a little bit hot. We saw him complete, complete that pass against Indiana two or three times last week when there wasn't the kind of pressure that he's under thus far. Jimmy Carter got the punt off. Flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. And Jamie Richardson made the fair catch at the 48-yard line. 34-yard punt into the wind for Carter certainly looked like there was holding at the far end of the line as Bo Carroll went to rush the punt. He got shirt tackled to the ground. I think any one of the 57,000 folks in attendance could have made that call. This might be the largest crowd in stadium history. In all likelihood, it will be the second largest crowd. Such a festive atmosphere. The, the whole town and state are so excited about Kentucky football. And when they sang the old Kentucky home song before the game, I mean, it gets you teary-eyed. That's a fun partner. The athletic director here was looking for a football coach. He was looking for somebody who could generate excitement as the basketball program has here for so many years. And he wanted an up-tempo style. And Hal Mummy was the perfect man. And he has won the fans over with this wide open offense, which we haven't really seen yet, obviously. And also with his very engaging personality. Hal Mummy is a terrific guy. Wonderful to talk to if we had a chance to visit with him yesterday. And some really unorthodox ideas, which, again, create newness, excitement. And that's what people like. We'll talk about some of his ideas as the day goes along. Carter from his own end zone with another short punt and another fair catch made by Jamie Richardson. And Florida benefits from the penalty, and there's another flag down right where the ball was caught. Kicking team was within a two-yard violation. Five-yard penalty, first down. Wow. Five-yard penalty. They didn't give Richardson his two-yard radius to which he's entitled. And uh, you've got to give a player two yards to make a fair catch. And there is a feeling among officials, I think, throughout the country is we don't want people buzzing those receivers. We don't want them to buzz by them. That's exactly what Kentucky did in that particular case. I think it's a good call. Jeremy Bowie was too close. Fred Taylor ripped through the defense and has a first down for the Gators. But you know, so far, the story of this game has been Jaquez Green. He, they throw it to him short or they isolate him one-on-one -on -one and give him plenty of grass to run to. When he gets one-on-one -on -one out in the open spaces, he is hard to cover, maybe as hard as anybody in the country. Four catches for Green, two of them for touchdown. And... Throughout his career entering today, he'd averaged a touchdown for every 4.12 reception, proving that ratio today. Johnson has a man open. Down to the three-yard line goes Aaron Kinney, the tight end who did not have a catch last week. That's his seventh reception 
of the season. He's a sophomore from Ashland, Virginia. 18 yards on that play. Well, Steve, Spur Steve Spurrier doesn't like to use the tight end a whole lot, but if you watch him, he just runs right down the middle of the seam in the defense and gets open in front of the safety. Doug Johnson delivers the ball. Textbook route and throw. Basically a textbook performance by Florida here in the first quarter. 21-0 Gators. Still four minutes left in the quarter. Taylor puts his head down and gets near the two-yard line. Willie Gary for the safety in on the stop of Taylor. Taylor, the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference entering this game. He's averaging 113 yards and change. And he's been over 100 in each of the first three games. Now has nine career games of 100 yards or more rushing. Kind of took over the Tennessee game in the second half last week, John, when all of a sudden Florida had not rushed the ball in the first half. Taylor gets going in the second half and sets a whole new tempo for the game. the handoff and Johnson got it back. Kentucky in need of a big break nearly got it right there but Johnson alertly pounced on the free football. What happens is a quarterback oftentimes gets the ball too high for a running back to handle. They put it up on their pads instead of in their stomach or the running back gets a little bit wide in his course and as a result the quarterback has to reach to get him the ball. That's what happened in that particular case. He had to reach. Timeout called by the Gators. Next Saturday, three. Before we really started practicing, well, he said the coaches and the players, both of us, it was such a big win for them that they all enjoyed it till about Wednesday. He said Wednesday and Thursday. Now we got back to business, and he said we were coming in here to make sure we continue to play the same way we've been playing. And sure enough, they have come out of the gate as strong as I've seen them in the last two years. Third and goal from the four. Empty backfield now as Taylor went in motion to the left. And Johnson appears to be changing the play. Quarterback sneak. And he got down to the goal line, but not across it. Ryan Murphy, a true freshman, met Johnson at the goal line. And it is fourth down and goal from inside the one. What Steve Spurrier does here, he spreads out. The Kentucky defense leaves it a little weak in the middle and then creates a little bit of a seam, a little hole in there for the quarterback just to squeeze through and go ahead and make positive yardage. It's, it's really a good way to play football. He attacks you where you're soft. And Spurrier upset as they weren't quite organized. And another timeout is burned by Florida here in the first quarter is that he's had to use two timeouts. He was agitated as they needed to call that one. Florida two for two on fourth downs this year. This is fourth and goal from the one yard line. Again, the backfield is empty. Johnson didn't get there. So Kentucky wins the battle. Anthony Watson led the stand to the goal line for the Wildcats. got to credit the defense of Kentucky, the front seven, they charge off the ball, they get underneath the pads of the Florida offensive line, and as a result, there's no push by that offensive line. Mike Major's defense, Mike Major and Hal Mummy have been together a long time, he's a defensive coordinator, he's excited, he finally made a play against the number one ranked team in the country. The shadow of the, our own goalpost. Couch is going deep, and it is off the hand of Keo Sanford. That had 99 yards and a touchdown written all over it. But Sanford couldn't quite run underneath the long bomb from Couch. I had stumbled a little bit. When he turned to run, he had stumbled. Keel Sanford consequently got a step or two on him and just couldn't quite hang on to the ball. And he rides. Couch might have been grabbed by the face mask. Now the pass is caught by Anthony White. And that's the first down out near the 13-yard line. 
It was Mike Peterson who was in pursuit of Couch and peered to hit him up around the helmet. There is no flag on the play. It is a 12-yard game and a first down for the Wildcats. Uh, Mike Peterson comes off the left side. He's a strong side linebacker. He loves to blitz. And when he comes off, he almost gets Couch. Couch does a great job of being strong in the pocket, finding an open receiver, getting rid of the ball, and eliminating a huge potential disaster. Anthony White pounds it out to the 16. He's a sophomore from... Twinsburg, Ohio, the fullback is the featured back when Kentucky runs the ball in this offense, which is patterned after BYU. It's exactly BYU's offense. How Mummy in the early 80s went to a clinic, heard Frank Broyles, a famous Arkansas coach and athletic director, lecture, and Frank said, hey, BYU, somebody better go study what they're doing. How Mummy said, that makes sense, I'm going to go do it. He went out to BYU, took the offense, and has loved it ever since. Florida coaches watched BYU film to prepare for this Kentucky offense today. You sense Kentucky is starting to get with the program here now as Jimmy Robinson was on the receiving end of a 10-yard pass from Couch, and it's another first down for the Wildcats. Less than a minute left in the first quarter. 21-0 Florida. You know, Kentucky got off to such a rough start in this game, but as you keep playing, you begin to gain your confidence a little bit. Hal Mummy's been in a lot of games. He knows it's a long game. He's going to have a lot of opportunities with the ball. And the team can score quickly. Couch, a flutter ball intercepted. Picked off by Fred Weary. That was not a good pass. A floater over the head of Jimmy Haley. And Fred Weary has his third interception of the season. And a nine-yard return of that INT. Well, it's unfortunate if you're a Kentucky fan because Kentucky had mounted a little momentum. But as you said, Sean, this is just not a good throw by Tim Couch. The ball got up and away from him a little bit. There was too much air under it. He kind of floated it in there. And you don't want to do that with number 24, Fred Weary, around. He's as good a defensive back as there is in the country. And he picked that one off for the Gators. Where he's a senior from Jacksonville. Johnson to the end zone. Touchdown! Number three for John Quez Green. Number five, John Quez Green. For a final touchdown. John Quez Green. He gets isolated man-to-man -man against the Kentucky defense and just runs down the field and runs a post right down the middle of the field. There's no one down there. The safety bit inside on the tight end, and Doug Johnson just laid it in there. Jacquez Green, has he lit up the scoreboard? Wow, what a performance. And that's true of this entire Gator team. Collins Cooper, the extra point. 12 seconds left of the first quarter. 28-0 game. In the Cheerleaders Association National Contest. Still managing to smile. Despite the way this has gone for their team, Florida yet another touchdown. The third touchdown reception of the game for Jacquez Green. And it's 28-0 in the final seconds of the first quarter. Craig Yeast ready to run back to kickoff. Stevenson's leg might be tiring, but no sign of it there. The fifth kickoff to the back of the end zone. Let's head down to the field. Here's Michelle. Well, Sean, in that last moment when the offensive line of Kentucky came dejectedly to the bench, it was defensive tackle Margin Marvin Major who came over to them and said to each one of them separately, do not worry about giving up that turnover. Do not worry. We've got three quarters left to play this game. Don't worry about that orange and blue out there. Let's play Kentucky ball. And we'll try to do that on this possession. Couch has thrown two interceptions. Goes with an inside handoff to Anthony White. Anthony White, a Kentucky ball carrier. And he's out to the 22 for a gain of two. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Florida 28 and Kentucky nothing. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Oh, hi, honey. Am I excited about Thursday? Of course, Thursdays are at. Yeah. Uh, this sellout crowd has been quieted by the performance of the Florida Gators. 
28 nothing after a quarter. And Cowboys will throw two interceptions in the very next play. Florida scored a touchdown. That pass too high and a flag thrown. Too high in part because Jimmy Haley was knocked down by Tony George. Interference, defense, first down to spot the foul. Which is the 30-yard line. Jimmy Haley just is going to run a cr crossing route against Tony George. Tony, Tony George was the SEC most valuable player last week for his play against Tennessee. This included an interception return for a touchdown. Flag thrown downfield. Might have been for an illegal block as Craig Yeast made his way to the 43 if the play stands at the first down. But that flag was thrown right at the feet of an offensive lineman downfield for Kentucky. Holding, offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot, first down. It's just a quick little screen outside. It's almost like a running play in Hal Mummy's offensive philosophy because they're not going to run the ball much. They want to be able to just get the ball outside quickly. They do that with their little wide receivers, just try to throw it out there and get up the field with it. It was successful, except call back for the holding call. for the spot of the foul is first down and 11. Couch, flushed, managed to jump it off to Anthony White. He's out of bounds, shy of a first down. Pushed out by Dwayne Thomas. Thomas missed some practice time this week with a calf injury, but he did make the start today. You know, I think you've got to give Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Florida, an awful lot of credit. Steve Spurrier is a marvelous head coach and a fantastic offensive coordinator, and he's hooked up with a great couch under pressure, incomplete, intended for Craig Yeast. Well, no question that Bob Stoops is one of the hot names in college coaching today, age 37. He's from a coaching family. His late father, Ron, was a high school coach. And his three brothers join him in the coaching profession. You know, he should be a hot commodity. I'll tell you, he's got a defense he believes in. He knows how it's structured. He knows how to attack people with it. Does a great job with that defensive team. Moving along the line, Ed Chester and Derek Chambers both came across for Florida. Before the snap, offside, defense, five yard turn. And that will give Kentucky a first down. Tim Couch draws him off sides with movement of his head. Sometimes your voice inflection, sometimes your head right here. He bobs his head a little bit, draws those defenders off. But Bob Stoops isn't going to get too excited about that. He wants his players teeing off on the ball. He knows that the running game for Kentucky is all but shut down. Now get after the quarterback and make him gator bait. Couch. Lofting it up deep, a lot of contact along that far sideline, no flag thrown. It was a one-on-one -on -one battle between Keo Sanford and Fred Weary, and it's tough to tell who was pushing or holding home, but there was no flag. Officials let them play along the far sideline. So, and it'll be second down. 28-0 Florida in the second quarter. We talk about the tight man-to-man -man coverage that Florida employs. It's a bump and run type of coverage. And there's always going to be some jockey and some jamming of bodies when defenders and offenders are going after it. But that was just great coverage by Fred Weary. Couch out of the shotgun. Deep again, too far. Couch has not been sharp. He is looking for Lance Mickelson. Couch coming off a performance last week against Indiana, which he threw seven touchdown passes without an interception. I think the defensive rush of Florida has unsettled Tim Couch a little bit. He's, he's releasing the ball a little quickly. He's a little bit nervous back there with the ball. As you said, Sean, he hasn't really been all that sharp yet. And part of that, hey, you got to credit those guys up front. They're teeing off and coming, like and right there. 
Indeed, they were right there to throw him for a sack. Mike Moten, the senior from Daytona Beach, who was given a game ball by Coach Spurrier for his performance last week against Tennessee, has his first sack this afternoon. Well, Mike Moten and Ed Chester, the two defensive tackles, they dominated the game to a large extent last week. He comes around on a little loop stunt. They just come around inside, and they just don't get picked up by the Kentucky front and as a result the sack it's a nice little quick stunt by those defensive linemen and linebackers Jimmy Carter the punter that foot is spin and sometimes be tricky Green wants to go over his head and the Wildcats will down it inside the 10 yard line Jeremy Bowie down it. There is a flag down on the play back at the 35-yard line. The punt stands. It's 59 yards and no return. With that left-footed spin, wanted to drop 13 of Carter's punts during his career. Florida did a good job not handling that punt. As you mentioned, the backspin on the ball is difficult when you're handling a left-footed kicker. I've seen it time and time again. It's just hard to catch. Uh, Kentucky has had everything that could possibly go wrong go wrong here in the first half holding the call against Kentucky oh now wait a minute Max Gentry just pointed in the other direction he just pointed at Florida with the second time he gave the signal I was gonna say Sean if there was any holding going on it looked to me like it was Florida holding up the wide receipt holding up the coverage people of Kentucky. It looked to me like that was holding. And they'll turn down the penalty. It was fourth down and 19. They'll take that great punt by Carter. We drive family sedans four by four. Dean at quarterback with just more than three minutes left in the game. He threw an interception with the score tied at 17. The Gators seventh turnover led to a field goal Kentucky had the lead one last chance for Florida under five seconds left workful to Chris Doring with a winning touchdown as time expired last year it was 65 to nothing today it's 28 nothing Florida after the longest punt of the season by Jimmy Carter the Gators back to their own eight Bo Carroll in it running back he takes the handoff he's a speed merchant and he's out to the 16 the true freshman from Norristown, Pennsylvania, Carroll, tackled by Anthony Watson. At least if you're a Kentucky fan, Sean, they have good defensive field position. They've got Florida backed up. Florida's got a long way to go on this march. Generally speaking, to go 90 yards on a march is hard to do. And even though Florida's the number one team in the country, the odds are they can't go down 90 yards on you. Eugene McCaslin. Again, somewhat of a forgotten man of the backfield for Florida is in now. Carroll gets the handoff as another big hole and has a first down. Out to the 26. Jermaine Martin tripped him up. 10-yard gain for Carroll, who is also a track athlete. And he was an All-American for Florida in track as a 100-meter runner. Now the Florida fans love Bo Carroll because he's so explosive and fast, and they think this is the next future star of the Florida Gators. And you can see right there on that particular replay, that was a gaping hole that he got to run through. Got his shoulder pads down and took it north and south. Johnson throws on target. Guess who? Jacquez Green. His sixth catch of the day. Tony Woods made the tackle. 25 yards on the gain. I know it's very early, Coach. How about Jacquez Green for Heisman Trophy? Well, if he, keeps, if he keeps playing like this the rest of the day, he may win it. I mean, you know, the guy has dominated this game. On that particular play, he just ran down the field, ran a deep curl about 15 yards down the field, and it was Doug Johnson who put the ball right where he needed to, and all of a sudden, Jacquez takes it and runs another 15. Very quickly, they've gone from their own eight to the Kentucky 49. On the delay, the play stopped for a loss. And the next the curricular activity or two, George Massey put the hit on the ball carrier. And then flying over the top of the pile went Ryan Kalick, the left guard for Florida. Florida has a very strong, aggressive offensive front. They're big. 300 pounders across the front, and they like to finish the blocks. Ryan Kalick, number 51, 
He's trying to finish his block in this particular play right he did. through the, the camera angle right there, and he did. He grinded him right into the ground. Turnover! Gator line without Deke Story today as well. Out with a shoulder injury. And back to Johnson. Kelly Ali plays defensive end at just 213 pounds, and that is his team leading fourth sack of the season. He relies on great quickness to rush the passer. Deli Ali, as you mentioned, he's, he, he has speed. He's not very big. He comes from the outside. He's isolated on Cooper Carlisle, number 70, and he just uses that speed and quickness, gets that left shoulder around, and uses the fast upfield pass rush for the sack. Big loss on the play. Loss of 12. Third down to 25, they keep it on the ground. Volcaro into the secondary. And he's still about 10 yards short of a first down. Very nearly a late hit by one of the Kentucky defenders. Jermaine Martin made the tackle. Carroll got 15 when it looked like he would only get a yard or two. Sean, I mentioned a few plays ago when Florida was backed up to their own 10-yard line. Even though you're the best team in the country, it's hard to go 90 yards on a drive. And if you can play field position football, which Kentucky did this particular series, it gives you a chance to hang in there. And the officials have stopped the play for a moment. And they're warning the Kentucky sideline to get back. They're too close to the playing field. Mike Major, wonder if he's feeling better today. Theo Sanford goes back to field the punt. Coach Major had a tough week, cracked a tooth on a whistle during practice, had to go to the dentist yesterday. Well, I don't think he's feeling real good today. I think Mike anticipated his defense being able to play much more competitively against Florida, particularly early in the game than they have thus far, but he's an excellent football coach. I really like his philosophies. He's a great fan of Larry Lacewell. He, he was recruited out of junior college by Larry Lacewell. Short punt by Stevenson, but it takes a fine bounce. It hit at the 20 and rolls inside the seven-yard line. 41-yard punt. CBS Sports coverage of NASDAQ College Football will continue after this word from your local station. For college football action, the address is CBS. Welcome home. Kentucky offense ready to go, trying to get something started with 9-10 left in the first half. And 49 yards of offense for Kentucky to this point. 24 plays from scrimmage. Anthony White trying to get some breathing room. Pushes it out to the 10. Another impressive performance by the Florida defense today. Well, they put extreme heat on Tim Couch throughout the entire game, beginning with the first pass of the game. Couch has been under pressure, just like Peyton Manning was a week ago. He's running for his life half today, and that's what's difficult as a quarterback. You've got to be able to get your feet planted and be able to throw that Florida defense, that pressure defense, has been strong again today. Second down, and six. Quick drop, uh, throw nearly picked off by Weary, intended for Jimmy Robinson. Well, last week, perhaps the best quarterback, most would say he is the best quarterback in college football, Peyton Manning, had a tough time against this Florida defense, and Tim Couch is near the top of college quarterback, certainly, and he has struggled. Well, there's no question, and, and Sean, it, it's complicated. People say, why can't you attack the Florida defense? To begin with, the defensive backs that press on you, man-to-man, -man, bump and run, they're outstanding athletes. Guys like Elijah Williams, he led the Gators in rushing the last two seasons. Now he's playing defense. I mean, you're talking about Fred Weary, one of the best DBs in the country. Couch ran away from the pressure to across the field. And Anthony White is short of a first down. Needed to get out to the 16 and close to the 17-yard line. Javon Curse and Tico Brown made the tackle. There's a flag down on the play, back inside the five. And, you know, finishing off on that thought about the Florida defense, Sean, you have those DBs, then you've got those angry guys up in the front of the Holding on the offense, half a distance, third down. You've got those angry guys up in the front of the defense, coming after him with blitzes and pressure and it just is hard to block him. Why wouldn't they decline that penalty? I'm surprised they didn't. <laughs> well, they will now. Mac Gentry 
and has had a tough time. This officiating crew had a couple of struggles. That time he assumed Florida was going to take the penalty and started walking it off. Then they were hauling him. No, we don't want it. Right. You, you want to, you got the ball back, make him kick, and don't give him another chance to play offense. So Jimmy Carter will punt to Jamie Richardson. Last year, Carter punted 13 times in the game at Florida. That tied the school record for punts in a game. He might have a shot of it today, the way this one's going. His fifth punt of the day. He also set the school record in that game last year. For, it's a fake! And the pass is caught! First down, Kentucky. Out to the 36-yard line. They snapped it to A.J. Simon. And he threw the completion to James Whalen Jr. The amazing thing about this is that A.J. Simon, number 35, he holds the ball forever. He couldn't find anybody open. Finally, he just puts it up, and James Whalen, Whalen Jr., he's the guy with the reception, number 85. I tell you, he held it what seemed to be a lifetime. Well, the offense is back on the field. Quick pass. Theo Sanford down the far sideline, close to a first down. Out of bounds, spotted at the 44-yard line. That's the second successful fake punt of the season for Kentucky. They pulled one off against Mississippi State. Well, in, in, in this particular case, the field position was so bad for Kentucky. You know, sometimes you, you, as a defensive coach, you say, hey, be ready for the fake, be ready for the fake. Based on field position, they were so backed up, it really was a surprise. Michigan and Notre Dame still tied in the first half. And now to the near side, Craig Yeats for the first down to the Florida Territory. For a little life on the step of the Wildcats after the successful fake punt. First down, Kentucky after a gain of 12. Ed Chester very slow to get up, and he is lifting off the field for Florida. That would be a huge loss. All of a sudden, you got Ed Chester out of the game, and you got Terry Jackson out of the game. You've got some good Gators leaving the game. Northwestern struggle continues this year. And another big win for Purdue. Timeout, Florida. Gators out of timeouts here in the first half. Expected that he'll return. First and ten. Florida used the timeout trying to stop the momentum being established by this Kentucky offense. Anthony White with a short gain. He molded ahead to the 42-yard line. Nico Brown made the tackle. With help from Johnny Rutledge. Tim Couch, 8 out of 21 for 81 yards, two interceptions. Doug Johnson thrown for 163 already. Thaddeus Bullard runs onto the field very late. Johnny Rutledge went off after making the tackle on the last play. And with the play clock down to three, Couch decided to use a timeout. 28-0 Florida, 6-12 remaining in the second quarter. Joe Willie Naiman. You got it? A week went by when it suddenly dawned on me. I'll get you 14,000 over three years. Do I really want him with 6 6-12 remaining in the first half. Johnny Rutledge still on the sideline for the Florida defense, but he does not appear to be in any considerable pain. Second and nine. Kentucky at the Florida 42. Hand off. Anthony White into the secondary. First down down to the 20-yard line. A gain of 22. Mike Harris and John Exnitis, a couple of reserve defensive backs, made the stop. Well, Florida came with the blitz from the from the left side of the screen, and they ran right underneath the blitz with Anthony White and a little draw play. All of a sudden, there was a seam created. The, the front of Florida got up. The linebackers were back, and that seam happened, and they grabbed it. White averages 93 yards per game rushing, second in the SEC behind Florida's Fred Taylor starting the day. Couch. Wings it out. The T.O. Stanford, the eluded one tackler, and picked up five, perhaps six, to the 14-yard line. Stanford's a senior. 
playing in his hometown. He grew up here in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, Keo Sanford can play for anybody in the country. He's an explosive wide receiver. Once you get him the ball, he's a dangerous runner. Couch gets it out to him quick, throws under pressure, but Keo Sanford gets the reception and then turns it up north and south and puts his pads down and falls forward. That's what you love to see in running backs and wideouts. Get it up the field. Right with another big hole. Anthony Wright, touchdown, Kentucky! Touchdown of the season on the ground for White. And the extra point added by Seth Hansen. Al Mummy comes back with the same kind of a running play to Anthony White. It's just a little draw play because the Florida defense is coming up the field so hard. There are seams in that defense. And the draw play is the play that Hal Mummy has found that to attack that defense. Outstanding block by Craig Yeast helped White along the way. It's 28-7 Florida with 5-14 remaining in the first half. You want to see where the real action is in a college football game? Well, look right. This big crowd of life. Now let's check out the results of last week's CBS Sportsline all-time great poll. We asked you to pick the greatest running back of all time in college football. And the winner was Herschel Walker. Tony Dorsett second, O.J. Simpson third, Archie Griffith and Earl Campbell rounding out the rest. That's an onside catch and Kentucky has it. came up with the onside kick and the joint is jumping now Good job on the onside kick. It got a big hop. And Kentucky moved before the snap. Right side of the offensive line. John Schlarman, the offensive team captain. Here's another look at the onside kick. When you're a heavy underdog like Kentucky is, you can run fake punch, you can run onside kicks, and not be under heavy scrutiny. A perfect kick by Samuels and recovered by Andre Hayslip. What a well-executed play. They lost five on the penalty, first and 15 at their own 49. Sixth penalty against Kentucky. They're having success with that play. White got almost all the penalty yardage back. And pushing and shoving, the Kentucky fans thought there was a late hit on the ball carrier. Johnny Rutledge put the pop on Anthony White. You know, it's interesting, the Kentucky offense, although it's certainly not known for its running game, they've been able to pick a little bit of yardage here, get a little bit there, kind of counter-punching, like in boxing. It's a counter-punch. They stick with White, and Florida's reacting better to that play now. John Exnitis, backup safety, made the tackle. Exnitis, a senior from Daytona Beach, a three-time national racquetball champion in the junior ranks. Won the national 12 and unders, 13 and unders, and 16 and unders. So we won't challenge him to a racquetball game when we show up at game. No, 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 no. He's obviously quick and got the little hand-eye coordination. Couch after the fake. Throw. Very close to a first down. Craig Yeast. At the 36-yard line, it will be very close. 
Elijah Williams made the play on Yeast. Tim Couch sprinted out to his right to get away from some of the pressure that the Florida defense is putting on him. And Craig Yeast, number three, runs a crossing route, gets open against Elijah Williams, 25 on that crossing route. It's fourth and inches. And they're going for it very quickly. Couch. Look at the sideline, how Mummy held up seven fingers. And then Couch got back under center. He lost it for Haley, and it is intercepted by Weary. Mike Harris deflected it, and Fred Weary has a second interception of the game. And he's all the way back to the 49-yard line. Darren Clark, a backup tight end, made the tackle. 33 yards on the return. Well, nobody's going to call Hal Mummy conservative. It's fourth down and about a foot. He goes for the home run to try and really put the pressure on the Florida Gators. And Couch just underthrows the ball just a Whoa. little bit. It's tipped. Weary gets it off the tip. Mike Harris, number 13, with the tip. And Fred Weary returns it back upfield for a big, huge play for the game. Johnson gets away from Kelly Ali. Throws on the run, and it is caught. Or is it? These officials have had a terrible day. No signal yet. Who caught it? Now they're saying it's an incomplete pass. Kentucky fans thought it might have been picked off by Lee Wesley. On the previous play to go back to the interception, clearly Harris, the man who tipped the ball, had his hands draped on the receiver. Haley before the ball arrived and that's why Couch was arguing with the officials as he came off the field now it's Mike Major upset thinking that that should have been an interception and was not well and here is the last play they're both on the ball and the official really can't determine who has control of the ball at that time that's the reason for the hesitation on the officials part they just didn't know if Jamie Richardson had it or if Lee Wesley had it they just couldn't come up with a decision well, it looked like one or the other had it, but they ruled it an incompletion. Perhaps we're out of bounds. And now Fred Taylor is wide open. And he has a first down down to the 31-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Gary. We're going to take you back now to the interception a moment ago and the deflection by Harris. And he's got his arm on Haley prior to when that ball arrived. Well, of course, you know, penalties are what they call, Sean. And in this particular case, the official doesn't see that or doesn't call it. The key is that Fred Weary gets the ball and not only intercepts it, but then he gets it up the field for such positive yardage for Florida. But think about the call. Fourth and a foot, and how Mummy goes for the throat. Johnson going for the end zone. Green has another touchdown reception, and then the ball came out. And they ruled it an incomplete pass. Green had it and lost it. And the officials are conferring in the end zone. And the call will stand as an incomplete pass. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not throw any objects. Jaquez Green lines up at tight end and runs down the middle of the field. And he's got that speed and explosion to penetrate that defense. Doug Johnson throws a beautiful pass. You couldn't see it on the replay whether he had possession or not. Johnson throws behind his intended target, and it is incomplete. He was looking for Daryl Jackson. He's a freshman from Tampa who has not caught a pass yet. We already saw Travis Taylor pick up his first career reception today. And another youngster in the act, but this time he couldn't handle it. Here's a look at the play boy looked like green ran a step two or three before that ball. he's in possession when it crosses the goal line it's a touchdown third down and ten from the 32 of tennessee and that is caught by the thief kareem tackled by lee wesley close to a first down they appear to be short by about a yard the folks were upset here at commonwealth stadium about the spot when yeast was ruled down a foot shy of the first down moments ago and that set up the fourth down and one in which the interception happened and they groaned a little bit over that spot as well but it is short 
Now the officials, no question, they're struggling here a little They've bit today. They've had a terrible day. It they started with the very first play from scrimmage on an interception that should not have been. And they made bad calls both ways. Johnson changing the play. Crowd noise deafening. They don't have a timeout. Johnson walks away, apparently content to take a delay of game call. And that's what happened. Now, this is, this is what's interesting here now, Sean. Ninety-nine percent of the coaches in the country would put their field goal team in and kick the field goal. Now you're looking at fourth and six or seven yards, and most people are just going to send their field goal team in, kick this ball, Spurrier. Now, they're not him. He's thinking about it. He can't make up his mind. He says, the heck with it. I'm going for it. Play offense. I'm aggressive. That's the way he is. He loves to play offense. And he does not have a proven dependable kicker in Colin Cooper. Fourth and six. Ali hit him as he threw it. It's incomplete over the head of Blake Taylor. So the defense holds. Johnson under siege. Had to dump it off. And Kentucky takes over on downs with 1.28 left in the half. Deli Ali comes from the left side of the screen. Again, he's one-on-one -on -one against Cooper Carlisle, the backup tackle who happens to be starting today in place of Zach Piller, who's not with the team. And Cooper Carlisle just can't match up. Big handoff. Pass the East. East. Got a block and got close to a first down out to the 38-yard line. Tony George made the tackle. Good block by Kevin Coleman, a fellow wide receiver. 11 yards on the play and a first down. Only one timeout remaining for Kentucky as they try to score in the final minute and a half of the half. It was 28 to nothing. Now it's 28-7 Florida. And Kentucky with the ball with a chance to score before the break. Couch to Mickelson. That's a short game. He stays in bounds. And the clock will run under a minute remaining in the half. Coming up at halftime, college football today's halftime report with Jim Craig and Lou. All kinds of scores and highlights coming up in less than a minute of game action. They're at the 43. Looking at second down and six are the Kentucky Wildcats. Out as Yeast, and he has dropped immediately, perhaps even for a loss. Elijah Williams, the senior from Milton, Florida. What a, quickly. what a break on the ball by Elijah Williams. He was seven or eight yards off the receiver, and he just exploded and made that play for negative yardage. Mike Moulton was injured on the play, and now he limps off. Kentucky fans booing, thinking that. Maybe he was just laying there trying to have more time run off the clock. Nineteen seconds left. Kentucky is burning most of the time here. They haven't managed the clock very well. The last two passes inbound. Jimmy Robinson. Flag thrown downfield. Robinson maneuvered his way for a first down at the play stand. John, it's going to be a clip against Kentucky. There was blocking in the back. I saw it clearly. Pushing the back. Offense. Ten yards to throw foul. Yeah, that was at about the 46-yard line, so they'll go back to the 36. Critical, critical mistake. I believe Jeremy Streck, number 77, came from inside out and blocked in the back as the ball is uh, thrown outside. There it is. 77 it was, Jeremy Streck. He's the top reserve of the offensive line. And as they reset the ball, the clock started running, and Couch used his last time out with one second left. Halftime is about to arrive without another play. Let seem to catch the Wildcats by surprise. Well, one thing good, if you're a Kentucky fan, there's been some momentum generated here at the end of the first half, and certainly they have got to go into the locker room and say, hey, guys, we can move the ball a little bit on the ground. The draw play is affecting the Florida defense. And the other thing I've noticed is that the Florida defensive front, 
is beginning to tire just a little bit. They're trying to come up field, rush the passer all day long. They have a lot of depth in Florida, but some of the defensive front guys have gone out of the game, and they, they seem to be a little bit tired here late in the second quarter. It is a very pleasant day. High 70s at kickoff. Not the least bit humid. You couldn't ask for a more beautiful day. And I know the Gators are happy to be out of the rain. They've had some torrential rains over the last couple of days in Florida. We hope all of the folks watching in the Sunshine State are holding up okay under the deluge. Numbers improving rapidly for Couch. But the three interceptions have been a factor. First two resulted in a touchdown immediately by the Florida offense on the very next play. And we're going to see if Sanford can run the distance. Theo Sanford, big game, but Mike Harris dropped him at the 40 at halftime. Well, as you might expect between these two teams, a wide open first half. The ball moving briskly up and down the field. And Florida leads at the break, 28 to 7. Steve Spurrier and the Gators look for their 24th straight win in conference. Here's Michelle with Steve Spurrier. All right, well, Coach, you have this game well under control. Kentucky's had a spark. How concerned are you about the shift in momentum? Well, we had a little breakdown on the punt there, but uh, we, we're playing pretty good. Our guys are playing hard. We, we knew Kentucky could move the ball somewhat, and we're playing pretty well right now. We just got to protect the passer a little better. Thanks, Coach. And the officials conferring along the near side, and uh, they've been hearing the boos as they head off. The end of the first half, the score, Florida 28, Kentucky 7. Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holtz will be along with college football halftime report right after this word from your local station. Mark Samuel had it teed up, but the ball just blew off the tee. He's a freshman from Anchorage, Kentucky. True freshman. Has handled the kickoff chores throughout this season for the Wildcats. And the second half is underway. Excellent kick with the win. No chance for Bo Carroll as that landed out of the end zone. And we welcome you back to Lexington, Kentucky. Sean McDonough with Terry Donahue. And Terry, it's a 21 point game. Florida with the lead as we begin the second half. And those uh, turnovers, three of them by Kentucky, all interceptions really hurt. Well, there's no question the turnovers are what really slowed Kentucky down. Kentucky has found a few holes in that Florida defense. The draw play, the quick screen outside have created some yardage, but they've given up 14 points off those turnovers. That's what they need to eliminate. Doug Johnson, quick pass. Another catch for Josh Wales Green. It goes for a first down. Gain of 12 out to the 32 on the seventh catch of the ball game for Green as we check out the halftime stat. And this, to me, is the key stat right here. 14 points off turnovers, total yardage. Not too bad for Kentucky considering they're playing against the Florida defense, but those turnovers, they've got to eliminate those in the second half to make this a ball game. Kentucky turned it over if he joined us right on the very first play from scrimmage. An uh, interception, the ball to hit the ground, it should not have been called an interception. And Florida scored a touchdown on the very next play. Nafis Kareem with the reception. Jeff Snedeker made the tackle. Tackled on the play Green's by down seven. short of a first down by about two yards. Sophomores Couch and Johnson with their numbers from the first half. And the big difference, obviously, the touchdowns and the interceptions. Second down and two at the 40-yard line. A minute gone by in the second half. Taylor breaking tackles. And there is a flag down on the far side of the field. There was movement along the line of scrimmage. Robert Jones, the reserve defensive end, made the tackle on Taylor. He's a junior college transfer from West Georgia Junior College. While he was there, he played against Hal Mummy when Hal was the head coach of Valdosta State. Motion on the offense. Five yard penalty. Previous start, second down. And Terrace Ross hears it from Steve Spurrier as he comes to the sideline. 
Florida dominated the first quarter. Kentucky had the edge in the second quarter. Wildcats sparked for a moment by an onside kick, which they recovered. That pass caught by Taylor. Jacquez Green helping with a block, and Taylor's very close to a first down. Tremaine Martin made the tackle. Jacquez Green at 5'9", 172, doing all he can downfield with his blocking. What Florida likes to do is Steve Spurrier said, I want the ball in the back's hands, and we're going to throw it to him as often as we're going to hand it off to him. He just lays it out, Doug Johnson. Fred Taylor makes a nice reception. He's got good hands, and Jacquez Green downfield trying to win the Heisman. You know, he's got those touchdown receptions. He's down there working hard as a blocker. They had a measurement. And they're an inch or two short. The catch by Taylor was his second of the game and his second of the season. They haven't thrown the ball to him at all prior to the day. Now, they like Terry Jackson out of the backfield more than Fred Taylor, certainly, and, and uh, Rod Frazier, the other fullback as well. Johnson on the keeper, picks up the first down. Following the block of the center, Wiley Rich. Doug Johnson at 6'2", 212 pounds. He's solid. He's a strong player, and, and there was a nice surge by the offensive line, Sean. They really moved the defensive line of Kentucky back off the ball for the first down. Interesting the story Steve Spurrier told us last week about Doug Johnson. He grew up in Gainesville. He always wanted to be a Gator. And they talked to Doug during his junior year, and they told him, well, we'd like to see you play a little bit your senior year, then we'll decide about whether or not we're going to offer you a scholarship. More about this in a moment. Johnson's pass well short. Well, then Doug Johnson went up to Terry Bowden's football camp at Auburn. Oh, pushing and shoving with an official in the middle. And as yet, no flag. And Johnson went up to Terry Bowden's camp. Auburn liked him. They offered him a scholarship right away. That word filtered back to Steve Spurrier. All of a sudden, Coach Spurrier decided he wasn't going to wait for the football season. Doug's fall of his senior year. He said, Doug, we'll give you a scholarship if you want to come here. <laughs> and Doug Johnson committed very early yes, he did. in the recruiting process. He knew where he wanted to go to school. He wanted to stay home and be a Gator. His mom, Donna, worked at the University of Florida for 20 years. Second and 10, Green has the catch. He's in the secondary with a first down. Jermaine Martin made the tackle at the 39-yard line. 17 yards on the game for Jacquez Green having another huge afternoon. But Jacquez Green simply runs down the field about 12 to 15 yards, stops, turns around. The ball is delivered on time, but then he becomes dangerous as a, as a runner. That's the problem with Jacquez Green. Not only can he catch the ball, but he's like a halfback with the ball under his arm. He's from Fort Valley, Georgia. Eight catches, matching a career high, which he tied last week with eight against Tennessee. And the handoff up the middle. Fred Taylor, they fake a reverse to Bo Carroll, a play they ran very early last week against Tennessee, and it got stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. Mentioned at the top of the telecast, Florida is looking for its 24th straight conference win. The tie with Georgia's team from the early 80s for the second longest SEC winning streak. Alabama has the record 27. Johnson to throw on second and seven. It's caught by Nafis Kareem for a first down at the 26. Going back to that winning streak, Sean, what's remarkable to me about the streak for Florida is that they've done it with the limited number of scholarships. When you look at the Alabama run, that's when scholarships were at least 105, maybe 115 players. Steve Spurrier and his group at Florida, they've been able to do it with the 85 limitations. That, to me, is the mark of brilliance. Impressive opening drive to the second half for Florida. Johnson, their own 20 to the 26th of Kentucky, first and 10. Johnson throwing for the end zone, and it's incomplete. Headed for Jamie Richardson. Andre Hayflip running in coverage. 
Well, you know, one of the things I think you have to think about if you're the Kentucky defensive coordinator, Mike Major, the guy that's killing you in the throwing game is Jacquez Green. Some way you got to start maybe double covering him and let the Jamie R Richardsons, the Travis McGriffs of the world, let them beat you. Mm -hmm. But don't let Jacquez Green keep highlighting the day. Somehow you've got to start getting some double coverage on him. Taylor has a first down, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Then it was Hayslip making the tackle. 17 yards on the game for Taylor. Sometimes you just watch running backs run, and you think they do it on their own. But in this particular case, Rod Frazier, number 40, the fullback, he's the guy that throws the key block that allows Fred Taylor to make this run. An excellent block on the linebacker. It opens up like the Red Sea. Fred Taylor hits it for the big game. He has 59 yards rushing. Been over 100 in every game this season. Taylor, good cutback. And he's down to the five-yard line. Again, he's in on the tackle with Jeff Snedeker and Willie Gary. Sean, it's a workmanlike drive by Florida. Number one team in the country. Kentucky gets a little spark at the end of the first half. Florida gets the kickoff. It goes out of bounds. They start on their own 20-yard line. They start going to work, running, passing, mixing it up, pounding away at you. All of a sudden, they're down on the Kentucky five-yard line. This is a very strong championship type for a team we're watching. An atypical drive for Florida, and that usually they score very quickly, right around two minutes. This has been a five-minute drive. Johnson in trouble. Not anymore. Touchdown, Travis McGriff. First touchdown of the season for the junior, Travis McGriff. Like the quarterback, Doug Johnson, Travis McGriff is a Gainesville native. His dad, Lee, was an outstanding wide receiver at the University of Florida back in the early and mid-70s. Travis, a ball boy for the Gators while he was growing up. His dad was an assistant coach. Collins Cooper. And it's 35 to 7. Terrific opening drive of the second half by the Gators. Robbie Stevenson to kick off. And Craig Yeast started at the one. And he's out to the 25-yard line. First kickoff they've been able to return today. 23-yard return by Yeast. Travis McGriff lines up in the slot here on the touchdown play. But you've got to credit the front of Florida with this play. Doug Johnson has all day long to cock his arm, recock it, and eventually Travis McGriff gets open. No one in the secondary can cover that long when you have that much time to, to throw the ball. But watch Jaquez Green. He wants the ball wherever he is. He's calling for that touchdown. Kentucky with the ball for the first time in the second half. Couch tucks the ball under and runs out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. That looked a little bit like last year when he was an option quarterback, a system that certainly didn't seem to be suited to his talent under the previous coaching staff. I think the design there was to think about maybe Florida's coming on the blitz. Let's move him away from the inside pressure, get him outside where he has a cleaner throwing lane. And sometimes you like to do that. You always don't want your quarterback in the same spot. Those angry guys up front will find him and take care of him. And the starting defense is on the field intact right now for Florida. Couch lost the football and goes down. Or did he just, he did hang on to it. He just went down under the rush. Willie Rogers and Keith Kelsey combined on the sack. Kelsey a backup, but he's in on a lot of big plays behind the line. Florida brings pressure a lot of different ways. One of the ways is with their linebacking core. They like to blitz him. Keith Kelsey on the blitz here comes clean and makes the hit on Tim Couch. I mentioned he's not a starter, but he started the day leading their team in tackles for a loss with five. Now they like to blitz Keith Kelsey. He's got speed and quickness, a lot of athleticism, although Dwayne Thomas is the starter and a very fine performer. On third and long, a terrific catch, close to a first down by Craig Yee. Boy, and Sean, a great job 
by the Kentucky offensive line. That time, Tim Couch had lots of time to get dropped back, get his feet planted, and rip the ball down the field. When you keep your quarterback clean, he gets his rhythm and his timing. When you put the pressure on him, he gets rattled and disrupted. Nine catch by East, a junior from Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Been the leading receiver for the Wildcats each of the last two seasons. First time today, Kentucky is converted on third down. Couch lofting it high, and it is incomplete. Looking for the third string tight end, Gary Davis, who has just one catch this season. Let's head down to the sidelines. Here's Michelle. Yeah, some injury update, Sean. Uh, Kentucky now without the help of their starting tight end, Jimmy Haley. He has a sprained right foot and is done for the day, and he joins a couple of Florida players who are out for the day as well. Terry Jackson out with that sprained right knee that he suffered in the first quarter, as well defensive tackle Buck Gurley, the sprained right shoulder. He is done for the day, guys. Well, Michelle, one of the things, Jimmy Haley, he is an athletic tight end yes. for Kentucky, and they're going to miss uh, Jimmy Haley in the lineup. Darren, Darren Clark, the backup, is nowhere near as athletic as Haley is. Couch showing some athleticism. Throws. Incomplete. No chance for Kevin Coleman to catch that one inbound. Tony George had the coverage. Coleman was behind the defender, but the ball was too close to the sideline. mentioned a moment ago the last third down converted on the 14-yard pass couch to yeast was the first conversion for the Wildcats today this is third and ten they have another and it's yeast again belted down to the 44-yard line he went spinning back into the traffic and got drilled by Willie Cohen's but it's a gain of 19 and the Wildcats are still marching Craig Yeast just runs a deep curl pattern against Elijah Williams, runs down the field as fast as he can, about 12 yards, turns around, Tim Couch with the time again from the offensive line. That's the key. When you can give a guy like Couch with his abilities time to start finding those receivers, he's going to attack you. And after that hit, everybody was happy to see Yeast rise. Oh, oh boy. Couch after a good fake. Throwing into traffic incomplete. Looking for Lance Mickelson. He was well covered on the play by Fred Weary. Weary had a huge first half with two interceptions and five tackles. And he was right there on top of Mickelson. And Ed Chester is slow to get up for the Florida defense. When we talk about press coverage, we talk about defensive backs who get up on wide receivers' noses, bump and run, bang them around, and then play the ball. Fred Weary is about as good as anybody in the country at doing that, almost with another interception right there. Came inches of stealing that ball. We're looking at Chester's foot, it appears, or his left knee. Ed Chester had a pin removed from his foot two days before the start of two-a-day practices this summer. Fractured a bone in his foot back in the Sugar Bowl in the national championship game, the victory over Florida State. I thought that Ed Chester and Mike Moten, the two defensive tackles for Florida, I thought they controlled the tempo of the game last week in Florida's huge win over Tennessee. They were able to really put some pressure inside and, and pretty much contain the Tennessee running game and put some real heat on Peyton Manning. Others, others contributed, but those two guys were kind of the, the mainframe, if you will. Midway through the third quarter. Couch, the quick pop and quickly popped is Stanford for a loss by Fred Weary. Bobby Stoops, the defensive coordinator, says Weary is their best coverage quarterback, and we have certainly seen evidence of that the last two weeks. What a terrific couple of ball games he's had here on CBS. Well, and if you're Hal Mummy, you're figuring out how to attack Florida, and you, pretty soon you say, maybe we ought to throw away from Fred Weary. Yes. But then on the other side, you have Elijah Williams, one of the best running backs. He's seventh on the all-time list of Florida rushers playing defense. So you know what kind of athlete he is. Couch over the middle, drop. That would have been very close to a first down, but it was dropped by James Whalen Jr. He was the recipient of the pass on the fake punt in the first half. Down by 28 in the third quarter. Now Money's going to go for it on 
Fourth down and ten, and why not? He's already pulled off an onside kick and a fake punch. Yeah, this is a good call by Hal. He loves to keep the ball in the air, and, and why not? Like you say, you're down by, by 28 points. Hal steps up and throws. Caught. It's very close to a first down. Great effort by Davis. Where will they mark him? It appears short from here. Looks like he's short by about a half a yard. Gary Davis, the red shirt freshman from Fairborn, Ohio, with a tremendous effort, but they stacked him up short. Mike Harris led the defensive stand for Florida. The tight end runs down the field, turns around, he's open. The thing you love about this is Gary Davis really fighting for the first down for Kentucky. Back live in Lexington, Kentucky, Sean McDonough with Terry Donahue and Michelle Tafoya. Florida with a second possession of the second half. 80 yards and scored on their first drive of this half. And here goes Fred Taylor again. Much like last week when he dominated the Tennessee defense in the second half, he is taking charge of this second half against Kentucky. Willie Gary made the tackle. We invite you to jump on to cbs.sportsline.com this week. Make your choice for the greatest college football wide receiver of all time from among these nominees. Tim Brown, Anthony Carter, Jerry Rice, Howard Twilley, and Johnny Rogers. Hmm, that'd be a tough choice. Tune in next week. To our games next Saturday, find out who is the fan's choice in the CBS Sportsline all-time great poll. Taylor up to 74 yards rushing. They need to get the playoff. And you see Steve Furrier over there on the far sideline waving his play sheet, trying to get some message across, not the least of which was snap the ball here before the <laughs> play clock expires, but that didn't happen. Steve saw that play clock, it was killing him. He just, you know, he wanted so badly for Doug Johnson to understand the problem. But Doug Johnson's a young quarterback, and sometimes you lose track of where that play clock is. Let me ask you this. When you're a young quarterback like Doug Johnson, you have a figure like Steve Spurrier. Great coach, great particularly with quarterbacks. And you're looking over the sideline, the coach is gesturing. I mean, sometimes I would think that could be counterproductive. You're almost too reliant upon the coach. Uh, you know, I, I guess it could be, but Spurrier has mentioned. It's Bo Carroll trying to turn the corner. Watch out. He's one of the best sprinters in the nation when he performed for the Florida track team. And he was dragged down at the 36-yard line by Deli Ali at the gate of 23. Fishing off that story. Sean Spurrier has mentioned several times that he really likes Doug Johnson's disposition. He says he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. He just kind of stays constant. And with Steve, that's important. He likes he likes to know that he can vent once in a while. He doesn't right. have to want to be sensitive about his quarterback, you know. And that's part of coaching, too. You have to adjust to the players, but they have to adjust to your personality as well. Taylor the lone back, and they hand it to him, and he goes through a gaping hole. And he lost the football. Travis McGriff got it back for Florida. Well, when it goes right for you, it continues to do that most of the time. And McGriff, hustling all the way, was in the right position. It was Lee Wesley who put the pop on Taylor to knock the ball out, but the Wildcats could not recover. The Kentucky defensive line has been told to play pass today, to charge upfield. As a result of that, the, the holes are gaping when they do occur. And Fred Taylor can hit it with such speed. The ball came out. Great effort by Travis McGriff, keeping the drive alive. Johnson to the end zone. Touchdown, Jamie Richardson. Jamie Richardson lined up into the slot and ran a post corner. Doug Johnson, with plenty of time, throws to an area. He's not really trying to beat any defenders with this ball. He's just thrown to an area. He knows that Jamie Richardson is going to be in the corner of that end zone for him, and sure enough, he was. Cooper with the extra point. Jamie Richardson with the reception, and Florida has its largest lead. Touchdown passes without an interception. He's 20 out of 32. 
for 265 yards. He's led Florida to two relatively easy touchdown drives here in the second half. The ball muffed at the goal line by Homer and picked up by East. And he's only able to reach the 16-yard line. There are the numbers we spoke of for Doug Johnson. And he has settled in very nicely as the starting quarterback takes over for Danny Werfel. There was some concern among the Gators fans at the start of the year, particularly after a shaky first game against Southern Miss, whether Doug would be up to the task, but certainly he has been. Well, and we talked at the beginning of the telecast about Doug Johnson being one of the real big performers with this Florida offense. They have lots of talent all over the offensive team, but he has kind of stepped up. Other than the first game of the year, he has stepped up and performed very well every week. Down by 35, the Wildcats go to work. They're going deep for Yeast. Couch threw it over his head. Again, it was Fred Weary with the coverage. Weary is not an appropriate name for Fred because he looks like he could run up and down the field with these receivers all day long, and that was the case last week, too. Well, uh, he's, a, he's a talented guy, and, and you know, one of the things, you, you talk about Florida, they come in to play a high-powered offense like Kentucky, but remember, they practice against that kind of offense every day on their own practice field. That helps them prepare for all the things that a team like Kentucky can do, because Florida does them themselves. Pass dumped Anthony White, and he's close to a first down. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, guys, you know, it hasn't been showing today for Kentucky, but this team actually has been drawing favorable comparisons to the Kentucky team of 1950. Last week, Tim Couch broke Bay Pirelli's single-game record of five touchdown throws with seven, and Craig Yeats tied Al Bruno's single-game record of four touchdown receptions. I asked Tim Couch if he even knew who Bay Pirelli was, and he smiled and said, I certainly know the name. And now Pirelli's name is right below Couch's in the record books, but it isn't showing today, guys. And Babe Perry was a terrific quarterback, went on to a fine professional career. That catch is made out of bounds by Keo Stanford. So it'll be fourth down at about a yard, and, and we guess that Hal Mummy will go for it again here. Keo, Keo Sanford doesn't leave himself quite enough room. When he runs this route, you've got to be able to leave yourself room to fade to the ball. He gets a little bit too close to the sideline, and the ball inevitably pulls him out of bounds. That is one of the things that Florida does so well offensively, always allowing themselves room to fade properly on the ball. And now the Florida sideline has been warned about being too close to the playing field. So when I used to get those warnings, Sean, on the side, I used to say to the guy after they'd warn us, I'd say, don't you have enough to do other than to <laughs> warn us about that? I said, there's all kinds of action going on out there, and you're worried about us squeezing you onto the field. Yeah, this but it's a safety crew in particular has had enough to worry about today. But, but you know, it is a safety consideration. Yes, what is. happens is those officials need room to work that sideline or they can't be in position. So they used to tell me that all the time. Maybe that's their excuse today. <laughs> Fourth down, about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Officially, it's two, but you can see it's a little under two. Homer put his head down and doesn't look like he got it the way that official is moving in from the far side of the field. Ed Chester back on the field after leaving the cramp moments ago, signaling that Florida has taken over on down. And now Matt Gentry, the referee, concurs. It's a sweet play run by the Kentucky offense to the right, and what happens is the play gets strung out, and the Florida defense is so quick and aggressive, and again, Fred Weary, number 24, he comes up with the hit that makes the play. I mean, you think about interceptions, tackles on fourth down plays. What a game he's having. Well, Tony George was the defensive player of the week in the SEC last week for his performance against Tennessee, and Weary certainly should have a great shot at that honor this week with this performance today. Johnson with a flag thrown by the referee. The pass batted down by Littleton Ward. We're going to have a holding penalty against Florida. He saw a takedown in the interior of that offensive line. Aaron Kenny, the tight end, was the intended receiver. Holding on the offense. Ten yards foul in the spot. First down. 4.09 left of the third quarter. 35-point lead for Steve Spurrier and the Gators. 
Zedalus, the right guard, is the guy with the takedown. His left arm gets way outside on Marvin Major, number 98. It's a good call by the official. You can't get your arms outside the framework of the body. It was Major holding. <laughs> no, actually, it was... No, no, no. Zedalus holding Major. Major got held. There you go. So it was a Major holding penalty, so to speak. And there's Jacquez Green, a little move to try to shed Tony Woods. And the tackle made at the 22-yard line. Gain of 17. Tony Woods and Jermaine Martin. Jacquez Green, certainly with a huge afternoon today against the Kentucky Wildcats, runs down the field, pushes the defender off, then all of a sudden turns around the falls there, gets it upfield. That's the timing. The key to Florida's passing game is they have rhythm. They have timing when receivers break when they turn around the ball has already been released it's on its way nine catches for green a single game career high make it ten wildcats came in a blitz green trying to maneuver to the first down marker didn't get there fine work by littleton ward the senior cornerback from lexington attended bryan station high school here in the city of lexington he's considered the emotional leader of that kentucky defense he's from a Kentucky family, his brother Sterling, was a four-year football letter winner here in the late 80s and early 90s. And his brother Bethel was the SEC champion of the triple jump back in 1981 for Kentucky. Jermaine Martin injured on the play. Might have been hit in the midsection. Now he's favoring that left knee. And he's a Senior, junior, junior college transfer from Apopka, Florida. Didn't have the SAT score out of high school. Who come to Kentucky right out of high school. So he went to City College of San Francisco for two years. Kept in contact with the Kentucky coaches and wound up coming here after he got his academic house in order. Well, he was an enjoyable young man to visit with yesterday yes, when we had a chance to talk to him about his experiences, not only at San Francisco City College, but here at the University of Kentucky. And he talked about how much spirit Hal Mummy had brought to the team and how the players were confident and having fun playing and that they were going to be successful. And they are. They're going to be successful. But not today. Fred Taylor with a touchdown. And it's 48 to 7, Florida. If you want to see holes open up from the eyes of the tailback, watch Fred Taylor here. There's a huge push by the offensive line, but Fred Taylor runs through tackles. The way you evaluate backs is yards after contact. Fred Taylor makes plenty of them. And Steve Spurrier during the week reminded folks Taylor should be considered a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's over 100 yards for the fourth straight game with 109 on 11 carries. You want to talk about how good Fred Taylor is? Terry Jackson moves from tailback to fullback. Elijah Williams moves from tailback to defensive back. And you and you got guys like Bo Carroll and Eugene McCaslin. It's hard for them to get in the game because Fred Taylor can just dominate a football game for you. He truly is an outstanding running back, maybe one of the best in the country. But in this offense, he won't be highlighted like other backs and other offenses mm -hmm. will be. Some of the fans heading for the exits now with Florida leading by 42. Next week, our coverage begins at 3 Eastern time with college football today. Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holt get you started at 3 o'clock, followed by one of these two matchups. Most of you will see Mississippi at Tennessee. Others get Georgia Tech at Boston College. Next Saturday, NASDAQ College Football here on CBS Sports. And Jermaine Martin apparently just experiencing cramps. The attendance here today, 59,224. That's the second largest crowd in the history of the stadium, the game against Louisville last year. The only crowd that surpassed this one. Robbie Stevenson. To the goal line, they let it bounce. Rather lackadaisically, Craig East finally grabbed it, and it will come out to the 20. You know, this is, this is an important quarter and two and a half minutes for Kentucky now. 
What you don't want to do is you don't want to let this thing totally come apart. You're way behind in the game against the number one team in the country. It's not like you're playing the Sisters of the Poor. You're, you're playing a real team here. Kentucky needs to just keep working, working, competing, and try to execute because they're going to get better and they're going to grow from the experience of playing against a team the caliber of Florida. Severe cramps, we are told, from Michelle Tafoya for Martin. He's being taken to the dressing room. Long pass, incomplete, broken up by Elijah Williams, intended for Yeast. We saw a moment ago Doug Johnson removed his shoulder pad, so it appears his day is over as the Florida quarterback. You know, although the pass was incomplete, Sean, it was a good throw by Tim Couch, and it was a good route by Yeast. Again, he didn't get pressured out of bounds where the ball took him out of bounds, and that was inches away from being a big completion mm -hmm. on Elijah Williams. 2.36 remaining, third quarter. 49-7. Certainly today, the officials have allowed a lot of bumping and jarring well down the field. One of the qualities of the Florida defense is this tight coverage that they employ against wide receivers. They get up on your nose, they bump and run, and they can cover you all over the field. It's hard to get any space any room to lay balls in there for completion. That's Bob Stoops' secret. He's got good enough defensive backs to be able to do that. Third down and 10, Yeast gets a terrific block and is pushed out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Marvin Love, a reserve wide receiver, cleared the path for Yeast, and it's a 29-yard game. Terrific block by the junior from Oakland. You love wide receivers when they can catch the ball and run and make something happen after the catch. And certainly Craig Yeast can do that. But Marvin Love comes over and lays a great block on Elijah Williams, number 25. You don't see it in the replay here. But that, as you said, Sean, that is what sprung Craig Yeast on that tremendous play. East over 100 yards receiving today now on eight catches for 104. Couch lofting it, and it is incomplete, nearly intercepted. Tony George had the best shot at it. It was intended for Kevin Coleman. For the most part, Tim Couch has not taken a real beating today. He's been under heat, but they protected him pretty well. He gets a late hit. Right there by Aaron Daniel, 58. Not late hit, a good hit by Aaron Daniel. It, it just came after the release, but I think it was a clean hit. Second and 10. Couch has a man. The ball again floated, and Weary nearly picked it off. Looked like Sanford was open. Ball didn't have a lot of zip, and Weary closed the ground and nearly had his third interception of the ball game. It was just open for such a short time, you know, and Couch saw that. Tim Couch saw that opening, thought, I, oh, I'm going to lay that ball in there, and all of a sudden, Fred Weary closes that gap and, like you say, almost gets another interception. Third down and 10. 42-point lead for Florida. Couch wrapped up as he threw incomplete for Homer. Pressure was being applied by Willie Rogers. Couch now 21 out of 46 for 216 yards for the most prolific passer in high school history in this country. Willie Rogers comes from the right side of the screen. The thing you love about Willie Rogers is the second effort. He got outside, Couch stepped up into the pocket, but Willie Rogers' intensity never waned for a second. Couch on the money, first down. He zipped that one in there. That had enough on it to Gary Davis. We mentioned the numbers for Couch when he was at Leslie County High School here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. National high school records for completion. How about the yardage? 12,104 and 133 touchdown passes the National High School Player of the Year for the Leslie County Eagles. Well, all of us in the country tried to recruit this young man. I remember talking to him on the phone and uh, visiting with him about trying to get him to come out to UCLA and out to California, but he was a... This is Myron Love. He threw the nice block a moment ago. That's his first catch of the day, and he's down to the 
the 27-yard line. Tim Couch was a hometown hero. There was no way he was going to come out to Southern California and leave, leave this area. It was going to be Tennessee or Kentucky. That's where he was going to go to school. He's from Hyden, Kentucky, a town of fewer than 500. And he is a superstar in that town. Inside handoff, White delivers a blow to Harris. And it's a first down, down to the 13. There was an interesting article in the Lexington paper today, a columnist went to Hyden, Kentucky, said just about every young boy in the town has Couch's number two jersey on. Some of them have number two cut into their haircuts. Isn't that great? Yeah. I love that. And you know, he, he seemed, in visiting with him yesterday, he really seemed like a great representative of the University of Kentucky in college football. He had a chance to go back to his uh, high school to watch a game earlier this season and spent a lot of the game talking with two youngsters who idolize him who have cancer. And he's in a little bit of a rhythm now. Craig East made the catch. Ronnie Battle and Keith Telsey made the tackle on Yeast. 5-4 for the Wildcats. They're at the 8-yard line with less than a minute remaining in the third quarter. And, Sean, one of the things all of us have to keep in mind about Tim Couch is that this is a sophomore, a true sophomore. Think about a year or two years down the road after he's in Hal Mummy's offense a little longer. Couch looking into the end zone. There's nothing there. He might run it into the end zone. Touchdown, Kentucky. rushing touchdown of the season. The offensive line did an excellent job. It's just a four-man rush by Florida. No one blitzes, so consequently, Couch has plenty of time. All of a sudden, there's an angle or a hole there that he can grab, and sure enough, quarterbacks, when they beat you with their legs, and their arms, that's when they're really dangerous. Nifty drive by the Kentucky offense. 11 plays, 80 yards, took 2 minutes and 21 seconds. Couch an 8-yard run for the touchdown. And they're going to try the onside kick again. Mark Samuel bounced it, and this time the Gators came up with it. They recovered one of those in the first half. If you were with us, it had to be Fred Weary. Who else would it be? It was Fred Weary. That was a great job of coaching by Florida. They anticipated the onside kick. They got a, a hands team in the game. All the guys with good hands on the team got in there, and they played for the onside kick, figuring if the ball went deep, who cares? We'll take it at the 20. And now all of a sudden they're at the 49-yard the line. Being led by a new quarterback, Noah Brindyke takes over. He's a senior from Fort Myers. Originally a walk-on, he was awarded a scholarship this past. Lee Wesley took him down to the ground. Another excellent day for Doug Johnson. Five touchdowns without an interception. 22 out of 34 for 286. Boy, Sean, you said the key words, too, without an interception. We've reached the end of the third quarter. The score, Florida 49 and Kentucky 14. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. He was just selected to be one of the University of Kentucky's two candidates for a Rhodes Scholarship. That's from the entire university. The 4-0 student is a double major in English and advertising. Eugene McCaslin has the first down out of bounds near the 10. Jeff Zerker trying to go to Oxford University in England for two years and pursue a master's of philosophy in English studies. He'd like to be a writer, 4-0 student, and a Rhodes Scholar candidate. Congratulations to him. Really wish him well. You know, he wants to go over to Europe. He thought it would be a real broadening experience for him. And was really excited about the fact that he's even nominated for a Rhodes Scholarship. Florida looking for another score under the direction of the backup quarterback, Noah Brindice. They take the reverse. Brindice fumbled the football as he was dropped to the turf, and Kentucky has it out at the 33-yard line. Deli Ali knocked the ball free. 
This was going to be a reverse pass. It was a it, it was a Steve Spurrier type play. He had run, he had run the reverse. He, he wanted to come back, fake the reverse, and go ahead and throw a pass off it. But Kentucky's defense came in on the pressure, stripping the ball loose. Big turnover for the Wildcats. Jeff Snedeker recovered it. Steve knew that that was going to be a touchdown pass. Everybody had pursued over there on the reverse play, and the quarterback just didn't execute it properly, and they let that penetration break up the play. And the first fumble loss this year by Florida. Anthony White straight ahead, out to the 38-yard line. You know, that last play was interesting, Sean, from a standpoint that Florida has a 49-14 to lead, but Steve Spurrier had a second-string quarterback in there, but he's going to call his plays. He's going to call his offense. He's not going to call the troops off. He's going to keep playing ball till the game's over. Mickelson, short of a first down to the 42. Let's get an update from Jim Nance in New York. John and Terry, Wyoming had taken a 19-10 lead on Marcus Brigham's 18-yard touchdown. Under five minutes to go, but on the ensuing kick, Ben Kelly breaks it for the Buffaloes. 99 yards, he takes it back, but they still trail. Four minutes remaining. Let's go back now to Lexington. Terry, Rick Neuheisel's in trouble today. Well, Jim, I'll tell you what, he hasn't been in trouble very much in his head coaching career, I can tell you that. On third and one, the quick pass, good catch made, and a battle for the first down by Kevin Coleman. Terrific individual effort by Coleman. The ball thrown away from his body, he had to stretch those hands out, and then he had to fight for the yardage, but the junior from Knightsville, Florida, did pick up a first down for Kentucky. Well, you mentioned Steve Spurrier going to the backup quarterback but still running the play. Do you get the feeling he and the Gators want to send a little message? This Kentucky offense, ranked number one in several statistical categories in the conference coming into today. They've been getting a lot of attention from the media, both uh, within the conference and nationally. And perhaps they want to send a message. We still are uh, the offense by which you know, every comparison should be made. Well, there's no question who the quickest gunfighter in town is. It's Steve Spurrier and the Florida Gators. But I think Steve just wants to run offense. I think that, you know, once the game starts, he's going to keep calling his ball plays and keep keep going. Anthony White carried for two. Second and eight for Kentucky. The clock ticking down toward 11 minutes remaining. And the Wildcats trailed by 35. It's 49 to 14. Quick hitter to Kevin Coleman. And he struggles out to midfield. They're trying to rip the ball away from him, but they could not. Mike Peterson made the tackle. Here's Michelle. All right, guys. Well, about the same time that Hal Mummy became considered a candidate for the job here at Kentucky, his wife, June, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that news was so devastating to Hal that he was actually going to withdraw his name from consideration here at Kentucky. But June stopped him. She said, I want this too. Don't I get to say something? I want this. So while Hal made his transition here to Lexington, June went through chemotherapy in Valdosta. More on that in just a second, guys. Third down and three. And another first down. Nice pass to Jimmy Robinson, a sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Once again, here's Michelle. Well, guys, the good news is that June Mummy has completed those chemotherapy treatments. She has a 90% chance of survival. But she told me the thing that really kept her going through all of it was the new life and career that awaited the mummies right here in Lexington. And Michelle Hal Mummy talked about how difficult it was for him trying to get his new coaching staff set up here and get rolling as the Kentucky coach while his wife's back in Georgia undergoing that ordeal, and they couldn't spend anywhere near as much time together as they would like. White. Now, Mummy said he experienced guilt, feeling like he should be with his wife, but his wife insisted that she would prefer that he do his job. That would be what would make her most happy. That's a very tough situation for their family and his Michelle, so the most important thing is that June Mummy is uh, feeling fine now. And coaches' wives, Sean, are such a special breed of, of woman. Huh? They, they really, they, they, uh, they live the, the, the life and death of every Saturday and on the football field, and they go through the the trauma with their husbands and, and uh, 
June Mummy, all, all the coaches. I have nothing but the utmost respect having been around them for 30 years and the things that they put up with and tolerate. And I think her experience demonstrates that it really isn't life and death, even though sometimes it is treated that way, these football games. Ten minutes remaining. After the personal foul penalty against Florida, Kentucky's at the 19, and now they're in the end zone. It's number 19, Kevin Coleman with a touchdown. <laughs> the extra point is good. And a green close-up of a bug and a touchdown for Kentucky. And the Gators anticipate another onside kick attempt. And Kentucky is lined up. I think they're going to kick this ball beyond the two front lines and pooch it up there. Nope, they didn't. Samuel bounced it. It's a free ball. Like the Gators got it back at the 43-yard line. Aaron Kenny, the tight end, in on the hand team, came up with it. But Samuel does a nice job getting that ball to bounce up high and create the opportunity for Kentucky. That's a that's a great kick by Samuel once again. The idea on the onside kick is to get it to bounce high so that somebody can go up and catch it. Florida had a chance at it, mishandled it. All of a sudden, there's an opportunity for Kentucky to get it. Jamie Richardson went in the air and had it glance off his body. You know, the World Scholar candidate, Zerker, went after the free ball and couldn't come up with it. Noah Brindice filled the quarterback. He hands it off on first down. And down to the 39-yard line goes Eugene McCaslin. Here's Jim Nance. All right, Sean, Miami could be on its way to his third straight loss. 13 and a half remaining. West Virginia takes the lead as Sean Foreman pulls it down at the Orange Bowl. The last time Miami lost three in a row, 13 years ago. The third team to beat them then, a team from UCLA coached by some guy named Donahue. Let's go back to Lexington. <laughs> hey, Jim, my old partner, I appreciate that. Wow. How about that research, too? Yeah. Movement across the line by the Kentucky defenders. On second and seven, George Massey, one of the Wildcats, a little bit anxious. Pull the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty. And the sophomore from Lynch, Kentucky, heads to the sideline. America's night of television. Tune in for the season premieres of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, early edition, and Walker, Texas Rangers, all tonight on CBS. We need to get Dr. Quinn a bigger picture. You, you, you really have been fighting for that yeah, last couple of weeks, little, haven't you? James Seymour's a little crowded into the corner of that picture. Second down and one. And a big hit delivered by Lee Wesley. He had help from Lamont Smith. No gain on the play, perhaps even a loss back to the 36. It is a loss of two. Eugene McCaslin, the ball carry. Well, you know Lee Wesley loved that. He was the Florida Class A two-player of the year and finished third in the voting for Mr. Flor Mr. Football in the state of Florida. So you know he loves putting a little hit on those Gators. McCaslin again did not get to the first down marker. It'll be fourth down and two. Robert Jones. Junior from Crawford, Georgia. Leading the defense for Kentucky. Under eight minutes remaining. And where they spotted the ball makes it fourth down in a yard. And Steve Furrier is going to go for it. And how about these fans? They were disheartened from the outset when Florida scored on his first play. And yet almost all of them are still here, and they're on their feet trying to support this Kentucky defense. 
And now Brindice calls a timeout. Midway through the fourth quarter, the number one team in the nation has a comfortable lead. Eileen, she's been good to us. I reckon it's time I go into town and get us a new vehicle. All right. These Spurs give him all Brindice to play. Fourth down of the yard. Fred Taylor. Gets the handoff. They on the first down. Off right guard. He's slithered down to the 32. And Florida moves the chains and retains possession of the football with 721 remaining. It's just an isolation play run by Florida. Steve Spur happy with that call and happy with the results. Keeps his drive alive. More importantly, keeps the ball away from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. He is a competitor, Coach Spurrier, regardless of the situation he wants to win every battle. And more often than not, he does. Taylor up to 127 yards rushing now. Eugene McCaslin, much more of a prominent ball carrier last year. He got tackled by Willie Gary, the true freshman from Valdosta, Georgia. The coaching staff here in Kentucky, very familiar with him. While they were coaching at Valdosta State in Georgia last year, they saw Willie play. That's a great high school football program at Valdosta High in Georgia. While Willie was there, they had a three-year record of 37 and six. He was a cornerback in high school, making the adjustment to safety at the collegiate level. Uh, Hal Mummy was telling us that he really thinks he can be a great player. And eventually, he'll he'll turn into what you're really looking for in that secondary. Brindice throws on the run, caught by Aaron Kenny. And a tight end lumbers inside the 10. He got knocked out of bounds at the five-yard line by Chris Ford. Ford delivered a pretty good blow to the 266-pound tight end, the gain of 25 for Florida. Well, when you, you it's a little play-action pass by Florida, but when you throw to a big old guy, 6'6", 267, 270 pounds, and he turns downfield on you, that's a load and a half coming at you, Sean. Kenny a sophomore from Ashland, Virginia. When he was in high school, he was an honor student and was the sports editor of his high school newspaper. He's also a backup on the Florida basketball team. Billy Donovan, McCaslin, pops off the pile of the five and zips into the end zone with another Florida touchdown. <laughs> Willie Gary and Lee Wesley Put a hit on McCaslin at about the five, but he bounced off that hit and scored. Eugene McCaslin has been quiet this year thus far, but not on this particular play. He shows his power and his strength running right through the Kentucky defense. McCaslin is a mild shoulder separation. The second game of the year against Central Michigan and did not touch the ball last week against Tennessee. Snap, release it was mishandled by Billy Young, and the holder falls on it. Back at the 25-yard line. So no extra point this time, and it's 55-21, Florida. Homer! Out of bounds at the 31. Well, Couch was Mr. Kentucky football two years ago. Homer was the last year. And he had an unbelievable high school career at Fort Knox High. Rushed for over 8,000 yards, 110 rushing touchdowns. He also had two other touchdowns. All of those numbers are Kentucky high school records. Last season as a senior, he rushed for 3,003 yards and 43 touchdowns. Well, I think Kentucky wants to give him the ball, get him some experience. He's a 10 400 meter man. Kenneth Grant, another true freshman. He's from Taylor, Texas. Went to Austin Reagan High School. Flag down to the play as Grant went down near the 30. Holding the call against Kentucky. What about Mummy Ball? How about you think of some of those ideas? The uh, very limited hitting in practice and that sort of thing. You know, I think every coach has to be his own man, his own personality. And, and when you and I visited with, with Hal yesterday, it was interesting uh, when we all sat around just visited. 
he talked about the fact that, hey, there's a lot of collisions on Saturday. Why have a collision during the week? That's right. It made some sense, you know. Uh, he talked about the fact that when you throw the ball, players have more fun playing the game. Practice isn't as much drudgery as it is when you bang away at them all the time. And they don't practice tackling very much against live people, which is really an unusual thing for football coaches. Defensive coaches uh, across the country would say, I've got to practice tackling live. But Mike Major, his defensive coordinator, has been with them a long time. They understand each other, and Mike understands he's not going to be able to tackle live during the week. So a lot of it's uh, good stuff. Thaddeus Bullard with the stack of couch. Mike Major and... Hal Mummy started out together as high school history teachers. And they were football coaches together at Moody High in Corpus Christi, Texas. Palmer with some running room on second down and forever. It was second and 33. And he managed to move the ball to the 36-yard line. A gain of 20. Here's Jim Nance. Well, can you believe it? Notre Dame has lost for the third straight week to a team from the Big Ten. This is the winning touchdown. Chris Floyd in the third quarter for the Wolverines. They prevailed 21 to 14, although they fumbled three times in their own territory in the fourth quarter, and Notre Dame can never take it in on those three occasions. The Irish are now one and three back to Kentucky. Mm. That's a brutal way for Bob Davy to begin. And Kenneth Grant, third tackled by Javon Kurtz. Who just looks, looking at that Notre Dame team, like the talent level is uh, down from where it's been in well, previous years. Well, although, Sean, you know, they've got a lot of starters back on that mm -hmm. team. I, I think you have to look at the number of starters coming back. And anytime a coach comes in new, uh, there's a transition period. Sometimes the transition is real smooth and easy. Sometimes it's more painful and takes a little bit longer. But, uh, they're you've not got, scoring enough. No, they're not scoring a lot of points right now, and you have to look at the quarterback there, and mm -hmm. that's always uh, the head coach and the quarterback always get too much credit and too much criticism. That's the way it goes in football. Fourth down upcoming, fourth and ten. Time Couch out. is called to timeout. Back for the final 151 in a moment. A company most people... You, Michelle Safoya back in Lexington, Kentucky. The sun setting on this beautiful day and it's about to set on this game as well. Couch on fourth and ten. Throws for a first down to Craig East. Here's Michelle. Guys, you would hope that uh, after being a four-year letter winner at a college, you would have more than just this slim file to show for it. But uh, cross-country, former cross-country runner here at Kentucky, Mike Marks, did not really make his mark as a cross-country runner. And maybe that's why he has become one of the top cart cameramen here at CBS Sports. He operates a camera that is driven around for him instead of one that requires him to drive around. And he just showed you that play through his camera. Luckily, he moves the camera more quickly than he moves himself. While he was just doing here, holding penalty against Florida is declined and Kevin Coleman has the touchdown, his second of the game, fifth of the year. Tim Couch in Kentucky is going to grow tremendously from this experience. The fact that they've never quit against Florida, they continue to throw the ball down the field. Coleman on the nice reception, runs to the corner of the end zone, and Tim Couch puts up 27 points. Seth Hansen, a freshman who's been kicking for the first time today, and he's perfect at extra points, four for four. He's been battling mononucleosis. And that's why he has not checked prior to today. Well, the junior Kevin Coleman with a touchdown reception. 19 yarders. Second time that number 19 has got a 19 yard touchdown pass today. And Kentucky battling to the end. They are two and one heading into this one. They'll be two and two when it's over. Then they have Alabama coming in here next weekend, and they're at South Carolina. Northeast Louisiana here in a non-league game. At Georgia, LSU at home, at Vanderbilt and Tennessee to round out the schedule. Tremaine Martin, the senior safety, said the Wildcats desperately want to go to a bowl game. Their seniors want to go out winners. That's their goal, and they have a chance. That's the way they have improved this season. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, I look at Kentucky, and, and there's no easy road for any team, but it's not going to be easy when you line up to play Kentucky. You're going to have to be, not their defense, 
But it uh, looks like they have the kind of system too, Terry, that they should be able to recruit. It's a fun system. Players enjoy playing in it. And they'll get better in it every week because it's a true system. Hal Mummy's been in the system since the early 80s. He knows how to tweak it and improve it. That ball appeared to be touched by a Kentucky player before it went to 10 yards. There's a mad scramble on at the 39-yard line, but there is a flag down. Looked like the ball didn't travel 10 yards before the Wildcats touched it, so even if they come up with it, it won't matter. Jeff Zerker's at the bottom of that pile trying to rip it away. Well, one thing Kentucky knows after today is that they can execute the onside kick, <laughs> and they're good at it. <laughs> they really are. Samuel makes it jump just the way you like it. Well, Kentucky did come up with the ball. But there is a flag down. Illegal touching on the blue. We'll replay it. Florida was offside, but Kentucky did touch it too quickly, so they're going to do it over again. Coleman, this is the previous touchdown. Coleman working against that press man-to-man. -man coverage by uh, Florida and just gets open. An excellent job by him getting off the line of scrimmage, getting separation from the defensive back. That's what Kentucky's been unable to do on a consistent basis. They got it on that particular play, but down in and down out throughout the afternoon has been hard for them. Mark Samuel will try again. Another free ball, and it goes out of bounds, fortunately for Florida. Boy, Samuel is about as good as they get at getting that ball to bounce up and creating a jump ball situation. Well, we showed you the Kentucky road ahead. Here's what Florida is facing in the coming weeks. Arkansas and a very tough game at LSU. At Auburn, a game you'll see here on CBS on October 18th. Annual battle with Georgia, Vanderbilt at home at South Carolina, and then the much anticipated clash with Florida State here on CBS to close out the regular season. You look at the Gators, they've got a reasonable chance of going into the national championship game at the Orange Bowl, no question about it. Tough road games in conference, particularly those battles at LSU and at Auburn. Of course, the Florida State game is always tough. Georgia's improved this year. Bo Carroll, the ball carrier. Hard to win on any given Saturday, Sean, but Florida is solid throughout. I see no apparent weakness no. in this team. I, if they have one, they're hiding it. Tim Couch threw for 348 yards today, 33 out of 59. He touched down three interceptions. Jesse Palmer's at a quarterback. True freshman, native Canadian from Nepean, Ontario. His father, Bill, played football in the Canadian Football League with a linebacker in the 70s. Jesse was the Canadian Player of the Year when he was recruited by Florida. Pass was incomplete. He was looking for Alex Willis. Palmer enrolled at the University of Florida last January in time to take part in spring practice. So he was a little bit ahead of your average freshman. Got into the ball game against Central Michigan and went four for four this season. He hands it off and Carroll tripped and fell and that should be the last play of the game. Well, Steve Spurrier and the Gators earned their 24th straight SEC win. That's the second longest conference winning streak in SEC history. 27 the record set by Alabama in the late 70s and in 1980. I think these two coaches are going to have some fun matchups in the coming years with this brand of offensive football. Now for Terry Donahue and Michelle Tafoya. I'm Sean McDonough saying so long from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, where Florida has defeated Kentucky. The final score, 55 to 28. Next Saturday, NASDAQ College Football on CBS brings you regional action. Many of you will see an SEC clash as Ole Miss travels to Knoxville to face Peyton Manning in Tennessee. In some areas, it's a Big East war between Boston Station of CBS Sports.